fingers crossed that everything will work. Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, we're having fingers crossed. Uh, Mr. Pickles isn't sat really still. Um, we have Muscle Pickles um, in today, which we are honoured to have him back. Um, I hope you have a good time with us, Mus Muscle Pick Pickles, and thank you for stepping in, in the la at the last moment um, to replace uh, m the Mr. Pickles. So, yeah, um, I think this is episode two of the adventure, because I think we've only had, I think the last time we had an adventure, we did <coughs> experience roles, and you, there were uh, a couple of jobs for you to take on board because um, Benny, your um, fixer, Minsk, was away on holiday. He's on a cruise to some distant, faraway paradise, island of paradise. And yeah, and you set off um, on a job. And I think we left it in a, a bit of a... Mm, what shall we do now moment? But before I tell you about that, I'm going to allow players an opportunity to say who they are and who they will be playing. And we're going to go straight across to Muscle Pickles first. What up? It's Muscle Pickles here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm normal pickles on the inside. I'm just wearing muscles on the outside. I thought that was Captain Kangaroo. <laughs> I know this sounds like something I would do. <laughs> and here I thought I was channeling wrath. Anyways, <laughs> I'm Mr. Pickles, and I play Zach Newman, which is our team's physical character. He's not very good with technology. In fact, I don't think there's much technology that he's as experienced with as the, as the rest of the members of the party are. Um, but he's very good with shotguns and revolvers and stun batons. Those are his weapons of choice. And his shotgun in particular is a little bit noteworthy. He calls it the bloody snail shotgun. Because if you get shot, you're going to be crawling away with your legs bleeding out and all that. As I said, he's a very physical character. He's got really high strength, but he's not terribly large in size. He's about average size. Um, we've found that he's good at sneaking things around, hiding objects, making it so grenade launchers just disappear. <laughs> He's uh, very, very into the idea of justice and the law. He uses everything he can at his disposal to try and deliver justice to the people who need it and lay down the law on those who are trying to evade it, which is a little bit contradictory to him because he is trying to get some illegal ammo, but <laughs> more on that later. And he got a new shotgun last week, I think. Yes, my old man rancher double shotgun. It's um, archaic. She's twice, that's it. But effective. Uh, well, we're hoping. I haven't gotten to use oh, it Oh, yeah, yet. that's uh, true. You haven't used it. <laughs> <laughs> it might just jam on the first shot, so we don't want to... <laughs> um, he's from so an urban drama. planet, so for the most part, he's uh, out of sorts in rural areas, but he tries to use his knowledge of the cities to help mm -hmm. his party. And with that, I'm going to throw the microphone as hard as I can at Captain Kangaroo. I catch it. What dexterity roll? Save that. Like, like that's Alan a thing, right? Captain. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, everyone, I'm Captain Kangaroo. My voice is slightly getting better now, now that I woke it up a bit. Um, <clears throat> hold on. <clears throat> there we go. Uh, <laughs> I, um, I'm playing <laughs> Arthur Hammond. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that for them. I'm playing Arthur Hammond tonight. Arthur, he's the stalwart, knowledgeable, uh, um, boomer of the group. He's, a uh, is truly uh, the guy you go to when you want things built to uh, get past your problems. Um, he's a uh, he's he's creative if uh, but he's limited in stock because he's too creative and he always always ends up blowing up his own things to stay with everybody, um, and then realize it's the wrong thing he blew up. Uh, Correct. But typically, <laughs> typically, um, he's still a go-to guy. He's pretty creative in, in most ways, but um, you know, he's still because he's so old and he's very uh, uh, he he directed to things that he thinks he knows more than what he imagines everyone else around him might know. Nice. Um, but besides that, he uh, you know, he's slowly trying to be more of a team player, which is cool. Uh, at the same time, we'll see where that works. Being such an old boomer. Uh, <laughs> I'm just like hammering down on the boomers. Um, from there, I'm going to pass the mic down to Medivac. Thank you. I am the captain. Don't say. I, no, I can't do Captain Kirk. Um, 
the other captain. And the other captain, yes. I am the group's uh, leader. I play um, James Minsk. I have too many names in my head at the moment. Um, I, I, I'm the most charismatic person you will ever meet, apart from right now, where clearly I'm fumbling. Um, <laughs> I am the group's go to face, go getter. Um, I charm. I don't like to shoot. I don't like to fight. If I can talk my way out of something, I will. Um, but when the, glo- when the gloves are down and something needs to be done, I'll try to shoot in the face and it'll pop out blaster. Mm. Simple as that. Uh, I don't know what's happened to my past i've got a blank there but i do know i'm a very good pilot but how or why i do not know it's just some kind of natural muscle memory i think Mm. um which is why i'm pretty damn good in a land speeder um yeah that's really it about minsk at the moment yeah 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 i said with that i'll pass on to purdy Yes, Purdy. Uh, Purdy. Uh, so Purdy is the group's robot. Um, she's a medical robot. She's very good with things like anything to do with medicine, first aid, um, astrobiology, and she and research. And she's also uh, is gaining expertise in politics. Um, and she loves to regale the party every now and again with some interesting facts about political campaigns across the star sh- the um, solar systems yeah so the party um, uh, last time came back from an adventure and a really exciting adventure where they were um, personal bodyguards of a um, off-world businessman um, called Mort and they were hired to protect him as he went off and shot and killed various um, creatures. Um, Luckily, although not all the technicians in the party belonging to Mort got back safely, um, Mort did and the party were paid and everything seemed to go very well. Um, In the last adventure, they found out that Benny, their fixer, was on holiday, some paradise cruise somewhere. So they went to the local um, bulletin boards to see what jobs they could um, have a look at. And there was two up for grabs. And one of them was to go to their um, quite familiar um, pub or tavern. Uh, Yeah, pub. That is called the Dry Gypsy. And they went there because Box, um, the leader, the bar person, was having some issues with a group of people that were coming in and, well, not being very nice and making uh, a bit of hassle, um, t- discouraging the um, the normal clientele, getting them to move away. Anyway, um, Box, the uh, bar person, uh, manager was not having any of it anymore and so they he hired the group and the group were really nice and sort of like understood that box didn't have that much money but came to an agreement uh, with a minimum amount of cash but certain free drinks on the way the group of people uh, they seemed very much like a gang and they were called the june riggers and they are uh, would arrive on the evening um, on speeder bikes and the party decided that they hatched a really clever plan and I still think it's clever to this day. Um, So they waited across the way um, out of sight of the speeder bikes. Hammond had his surveillance, surveillance drone up in in high atmosphere well no not high atmosphere but up in the air ready to track and the idea was that um, as the speeder bikes arrived and the dune riggers went into the dry gypsy newman with his wonderful concealing ability would nip across plant uh, uh, an rfid tag a tracer tag onto one of the um, bikes and then head back to um, the um, shelter 
the camouflage of the road opposite and then with a combination of the drone and their own understanding of sensors they were hoping then to plot where the dune riggers had come from everything went according to plan the dune riggers dune riggers arrived um, three bikes two people on each um, with a grand total of six and they went inside well almost all of them went inside because one person one of the dune riggers stayed outside to guard the bikes and that's where we left it last time their party were um, hiding in the street opposite the bikes had arrived and the um, the rest of the dune riggers five of them had gone into the dry gypsy and one was outside and that's it it's getting late at night so it is dark and i left the party with that and i'm sure they've come up with some wonderful ideas uh, what to do next so yeah um let's go straight into it and so we'll take it that time sort of like stood still so we're we're getting to the point so what you've seen you all i think minsk are you in your car i think you had the hover car with you didn't you you have a very quiet i keep pushing down my, my cap ski because that's my discord key oh right. <laughs> <laughs> so no it's not working but uh, yes I, I was in my car um and we were waiting to to do something wonderful yeah. but we didn't really and was purdy you. with you or not no did we leave it behind we left it behind didn't we because um it should talk too much we think yeah <laughs> what? i'm pretty sure that is we we needed to do this stealthy and quiet so we thought Purdy should be behind but i don't know yeah. guys because there's nothing more uh that bike gains love to talk about is local politics that's mm. that's their that's their bread and butter well, so i don't know oh yes yeah, she was recharging i remember yeah. now yes yeah she she was recharging so yeah so but she did come with you the first time yeah. because she engaged with conversation with a lawyer or something like that um right and right. the very case Yes, yeah, yeah. She, she got really into that. So, yeah, so the three speeder bikes um, arrive. And um, just so you know, Minsk, these look, they don't look sh shabby bikes or shoddy bikes at all. They, they seem to be, you notice that they've obviously got some sandblasting um, on the fine metalwork, in, in which case, even from where you are, you notice that, um, it was pretty nice metalwork to start off with and it tends to be a bit ruined and if you remember they were wearing um, like leather jackets that had been also sandblasted highly yes, really good quality as well weren't they yeah uh, really good a lot better than what you all were probably expecting mm. and so they they put their and um, they turned the hover bikes off um Five of them in, went in and there seems to be one just stood outside. Um, just to let you know, it, from where you are at the moment, it looks like um, it's a young male. You figure somewhere between 18 and 25. Um, and the first thing that they seem to do, once they um, lifted their goggles up over their eyes and removed um, what seems to be a wraparound piece of cloth that they're using to protect their mouth and nose, they just, he just sort of like leaves that and it hangs down and promptly like, takes out what appears to be some kind of tobacco. Um, you're not too sure what he is smoking, but he takes it out and lights it. And yeah, could you all, th um, three of you, it's up to you. You can either make perception rolls or um, your car has sensors, um, Mint. So if you would prefer mm. to... Um, roll the sensors in your car uh then yeah, it's up I, it's up to you yeah yeah i think it would be because i'll be too busy looking at screens anyway so yes yeah uh, oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like to do that. 
you know, that's, yeah. that's, what, that's what cars are for. <laughs> that's how we want that's, to start. That is scary, start. Okay. Yeah, hang on. Wait to Newman and Hammond roll. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I know. Roll 100. We picked the wrong time for the hack, <laughs> the system. <laughs> That's, you know, that's terrible. One, I got it's not one a 99. Off. Yeah, that's, that's not terrible. One off. That's one off. Oh, I'm doing perception too. Is that yeah. what you guys suggest you want me to perceive? Yeah, I think um, yours is about 22, isn't it? <laughs> well, you know, I, it's it's my eyesight. Like, you know, it, it deteriorates over time, guys. Like, it's not something to make fun of. Oh, it's actually 41. It's not terrible. Uh, oh, it's not. Oh, but <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> I can't say. Um, Newman and Hammond, I'm assuming you're not using any uh, luck at this point? No. Uh, no, I'm, I'm just thinking of ways to beat this guy up. Yeah. Okay, then. Um, so you do I have an idea. A, a quick sensor um, sweep with your hover car sensors, uh, Minsk. <laughs> and the, he seems to have not have. He doesn't seem to have any augmentations on him, i.e. he's biological through and through. Um, you do know he seems to be wearing no armor apart from his leather. Um, you do notice, however, he is armed um, in a shoulder holster underneath his left arm. He is um, housing what appears to be the, the butt of a, a nine millimeter automatic pistol. Um, you also notice that once he gets a cigarette into his hand mouth, he seems to be taking out um, a knife. Uh, it's it's not um, it's not a big knife. Um, he's using it to slowly clean his um, fingernails at the moment, and he's just sort of like going mm -mm, like junk. that. Um, and then every now and again, he's taking his cigarette out and blowing um, smoke up in the air, and then taking another um, drag of it. Um, so yeah, uh, but he he's definitely packing. <laughs> um, right, guys. How about if I walk over there, pretend to go into the bar, cause distraction? Um, I, I actually have one idea. Um, oh, cut him. Go for it, Arthur. Sure, this is what I was thinking. Um, we go up there, and uh, me and you cause a little tussle, get his reaction, have him coming up to us, are very angry, and then all of a sudden comes in uh, Newman with the sensor, place it very nonchalantly on the bike, head off, and then we remember that. We are not dumb hooligans, and we start fighting. <laughs> I love um, it. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> but I do think that not causing a fight is the more important thing. Um, we won't cause a fight. We'll be fighting each other. Oh, right. I see. Yeah. We're not, would, we're not going to cause a fight with him. Yeah. Who would have known acting would come in useful? That's right. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Back we in to, university, I was <laughs> the local play. <laughs> I was the local fisticuffs person. I feel like I was the father in Hello Dolly. We should have all just been a theater troupe. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing we share in common. Oh, is <laughs> we, we should lie. So. You suddenly break um, out to the sun will come out tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, we, well, whichever way, we need distractions just looking the opposite way to where Newman's going to be coming from. Yeah, we're going to uh, then, do it to the other does end. Have, Hammond does have a sniper rifle. Well, I'm not going to sniper him, man. The, fist. Yeah. The, the whole idea of this was to distract him so yeah. Hammond so if, if, can get there. If I what? shoot the man in the face before, and they come out, it's like, oh, he's just sleeping. He's and then they sleeping. Take <laughs> they just take right. off without him. I actually agree with your plan. And we're going to do, we're going to walk past him from this direction, drunk. Mm -hmm. We're going to go a good distance away, have a little argument, and then start fighting. Mm -hmm. um, when Newman sees he's distracted, he's going to sneak around, plant the bug, come back. Yeah. So when you're starting to fight, you um, are wanting the guy to come over and break it up. Is that no? Yeah. 
Well, no. I think the best way to do that. I'm <laughs> I got one person to... said, "Yeah, one person." No, we, we just want to distract him. Well, I don't want him to get like involved. In no. the oh, I see. You just want him to go. Oh, there's a fight. Yeah, the fight going to go. Watch that. We'll have yeah. my smoke. And or like bring us up because we're getting too close to the bikes. Uh, like, say, think... get the fuck out of my bikes. No, we'll be way away from there. But it's like oh. if somebody's fighting, they're going to watch, isn't he? Oh yeah. And so Newman can walk behind, put a put, put the tracker on one of the furthest bikes away. And walk away. So I'm assuming that you're not actually going to um, hit each other. No, I'm just going to shoot when it gets close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time coming. Yeah. So is it <laughs> a, is it a bit like mock fighting that you're? you're well, doing? you know, yes. here's the thing. I don't have a. Uh, I don't know if it's a ability. I don't have an acting ability. No. So but, what you're going to do, just so you know, um, so. Yeah. I'm going to allow you to your roll a deceit roll. That's what you're going mm. to roll. But I am going to allow you to augment it with your unarmed combat, because I figure if somebody was really good at unarmed combat, they would be able to make it look um, a lot better than than. I, I completely can I, can I just agree. Rewind this, but, okay. but... <laughs> you, you see me fight. I'm not going to hurt him. Yeah. I know, but that's yeah. the thing. I don't want to use an acting role. I just want to use my unarmed role fight. knowing that I'm going to yeah. have a terrible role. So, yeah. So, I'm going to fight and I'm going to pull my punches in a sense or pull, yeah. In other words, lethal damage. I'm doing. Yeah. Got you. So, yeah. The, the idea is to actually use your unarmed combat skills yes. then, to actually heal each other because our power, our attack. I'm back. still angry that he changed our the ship's. Um, dental plan and so i have some built up anger that i want to you yeah. know take off at this point uh, and, and i've got some built up anger because obviously I, there's there's some pristine <laughs> dentures i was looking at and um you know they, i, I can't to, get them now okay then so th this sounds an excellent plan and then when he is distracted um newman you're going to creep up aren't you is that the idea yep. gonna be creeping Okay, and that will be to plant uh, a bug, the bug onto one of the scooter bikes. Correct. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, then. So how uh, how I, we're going to play is this. So um, Minsk and Hammond, you're going to have a real fight, pulling punches, so only doing stun damage, but still um, using unarmed combat. And how good you are in that combat will determine his role to interact with you. So, I mean, if, if it's a case that you're both sort of like slapping um, <laughs> thin air with each other, then, you know, he'll sort of like, the, the role will be a lot easier for him to resist. However, if Hammond lands a sucker punch, you know, and knocks you out, Minsk, just by chance, then... Which, then which that, will happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Then and then that that would be um, very that that would be brilliant. So um, can can anybody? Ah, oh, there you go. Set to stun. This is the rules that I want. Uh, Last German, that's what you call me. Um, so da, 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 da. so your conflict pools for both of you are your constitution. Add your size and then divide by two. Okay. And then what Why? what you're going to do then you'll roll your unarmed combat, okay, and whoever wins will do one D four points damage to the other person's conflict pool. Okay. So if only it was Cyrus, I'd win with one flap. <laughs> <What are you? laughs> so so just just out of interest, so I, I've got a note. What what uh what will your combat pool be, Hammond? Or mint. Oh, right, right now it's 12. Uh, so you're going to have 12. I'm just writing it next to your um, character. What about what about you, Minsk? What's your comment? 40 or 10. <laughs> Four or 10, did you say? 40 or oh, 10. Right, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go with, 10. with 10 then. Okay, yeah. then. So um, first things first, you two better, um, just so we do it fairly, you both better roll initiative to see... Um, who is going in so um, Newman um, how we'll do this is that we'll have like one hit and hit back 
and then um, then I'll ask you whether or not you want to go in, start to go in. Is there a condition <clears throat> that you want to wait to see happening, Newman, before you start making your way there? Um, I think mostly I want to see that the guy is making a little bit of movement, like at least one step, like turn, turning around and then one step in that direction, like trying to make eye contact, probably to see what he needs to do. Yeah, or got it, got you. That's yeah. what I'm looking for. Okay, then. Brilliant. Okay, then. So, um, Hammond and Minsk, just roll some initiative, and then we know who's going to... Um... Ooh, 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 ooh. Minsk, so you now, came prepared. Um, you should have slipped my wife. <laughs> oh, do you know, you're, I'll add it to the combat tracker, because it didn't... Oh. Okay. Oh, it's just... Oh, I didn't get my character from the wife. Um, it's just loaded up. Hang on, I just need to. Um, oh, it's gone back to the. Um, it's it's not a problem. I can do them um, both. So Hammond was fourteen, and Minsk. Wow, yours was three. Twenty three. This is. Uh, let's I think you're pre you're prematurely using all your good rolls for nothing. Yeah. Right <laughs> they, they, they say, okay then. So Minsk, you oh, go. That's right. Dex is one d ten. One d ten plus thirteen. Yeah. Is your initiative bonus thirteen? No, but it says one d ten plus thirteen, which is my Dex, isn't it? It, it should be. Um, you should have on your character um, near the top, it should say initiative. Yeah, what do you come yeah. plus 13? You roll yeah. the one, so you're, you're the same yeah. as me, Arthur. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. I, I had. So you got a 10, ten, and he got yeah, one. I had a yeah, one. yeah. So, Mince, so you um, tell me how you're getting out onto the street. Are you sort of like messing about, or is there going to be a, a drunkard soup stupor? No, that we, you're can, going we can to walk, uh, walk friendly, I reckon. Like I, I have a drunken stone. stupor. I'm going to have a drunken stupor. I'm going to just hold on to him. Okay. And then, go with the flow. And then I'm going to shout uh, with a push. I'm going to make a good shout. I told you, I don't want you talking to my daughter. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> no. no. I didn't hear a word of that. <laughs> I, said, I, said, I, I told you, I don't want you talking to my doctor. <laughs> oh, I thought you said, I don't want your tokens on your doctor. And I was trying to figure out, I don't want, got you. Welcome to Scotland. No, yeah. Um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Mince, you're going to take that personally, as I said, and uh, la try to land a punch on him. Go for it. Oh, I, I, I'm going to say, what, what do you mean, again? I told you, she's too good for you, and I don't like the fact that you are garbage man. Uh, there's a perfectly <laughs> reputable job in a garbage man, I'll have you know. Push. So, yeah, so just, that, um, just before um, you um, punch, um, let's both have a couple of deceit rolls from you both, and then we're going no. to um, combat. Uh, I just want to I'll see whether or not the June rigger sort of like... My worst has... skill ever. <laughs> is it deceit if this is actually just true scenarios for them? Yeah. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to... I'm going to... Hold on. I'm going to actually... Um, I use my, my point of luck for this one. Why not, right? Yeah, that's cool. And re-roll it. I'm going to re-roll it. I think I can, I can do this. Come on, guys. I got this. I need to put my acting to the test. You've got this. Ooh. Come on. No! No! <laughs> no! Yeah, so there, there's a bit of a, a, a strange accent coming across, and the, the jewel rigger sort of like looking at it and looks across and sees this elderly man and this young spryster of a lad um, uh, coming down the street, and he seems to have attracted your attention. You've attracted his attention, but he's not. He sort of like is puzzling. Um, you're playing a really good part, uh, Minsk, but Hammond, you're letting the side down a bit. And Minsk, you see this and think that's a perfect opportunity to give him a, a slap. Um, so go Which for it. Which I will do. An armed um, combat. An armed combat, here we go. Oh. <laughs> and, and, and I'll reach to, I'll, I'll sort of 
push his shoulder and go all like that and miss and then sort of stagger sideways. Yeah. Uh, like, so, Hammond, well, you're um, an armed combat as and well. I'm going to attempt to, to push him with me. I'm going to yeah. push him. Let's see how successful you are. It's, I just think this would be hilarious to watch at the moment. <laughs> Newman's enjoying the fight. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so makes you sort of like try to throw a punch and miss, and yeah. um, Hammond tries to push you out the way and just sort of like fall forward. Uh, falls um, forward. Falls forward. And yeah. um, the uh, you Newman, you can see the um, the Jew rigger is having a bit of a giggle, you know, uh, as if this is a sort of like, you know, when. When I'm watching, I, I like to see people's reactions, so I always look across to the OBS screen when I can see it. And every time I look at it, I just think Mr. Pickles is still just doing that. Because <laughs> that's oh, all I, I am. That's you, what I you, do. That's I just lean all. back and get all muscle. You can't take me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was me in the fight, it'd be different. So then, everything he broke his collarbone. There, there's a bit of fumbling around as if two drunk people would be doing, but then Hammond, it's your turn to try to land the blow on Minsk. Well, he has to, no, he has to go next. I, I brought a six. No, so um, he he tried to um, hit you and you opposed his roll. So, oh, if, that's if, what it was. Okay. Yeah, so if he succeeded, he would have done mm. damage to your 12. And now uh, you're hitting, you're hitting back. So I'm, uh, I'm gonna, because I don't feel like we're getting enough attention from from the boy on the other side. I'm gonna do a bad move, and I'm gonna push him towards one of the bikes. Oh, oh, go on, and I'm combat then. Let's uh, we want to look at our way, remember? Uh, uh. Yeah, yeah, but, but push him on the bikes at <laughs> the other end of it. <laughs> I'm gonna push him on the bike thinking. on the other end of. <laughs> From the, from behind. I just want one of them to slip and fall and then like burp or fart or something. That is going to get this guy laughing, and I think laughter is the cover. But <laughs> since, since I did such a bad job, would it make sense that I go past him and I run to the bike? Well, let let's see how <laughs> let's see how Minsk opposes this because Minsk might see the punch coming or the move coming and do a oh, reaction. It's, it, there is nothing more well, clear than the fact that I'm coming at him. What I will be doing is grabbing his arms, spinning him around away from the bike. Yeah, hopefully. hopefully. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> We are so rubbish. So there, there, is, <laughs> there is this sort of like hilarious combat going on and your arms are flailing all over the place. And you, Newman, you're watching the um, rigger, uh, the June rigger, who's actually started uh, to laugh. Um, a, a bit now at this as they sort of like fumble around left, right, and center. Um, Minsk, try to hit back at um, hmm. Hammond. I'm going to kick him in the jewels. Oh! 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 <laughs> oh! <laughs> wow. What? <laughs> I got a three for both of them. Man. <laughs> <laughs> it is nuts. <laughs> Uh, okay, right. Hammond. If you need a one. <laughs> nah. no, yeah, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do that one too. You yeah, no, you need a three. It. You need a three. Need a three. Oh, three. Yeah. Right. It needs There's to be a critical one. three. But no, he misses no. altogether. And so oh, no. you actually make contact. And I think for that critical, we're not going to roll damage. I'm just going to give you the full four. You know that that seems um, yeah, that's, fair, that's fair at this this point, which will take. And half I don't talk like this. <laughs> will take your um, thing, um, your conflict pool down to eight as Mix turns around and goes, <clears throat> and uh, Hammond sort of like doubles over, and the Newman, you notice that the June rigger sort of like lets out this um, howl of laughter because he saw exactly where Minsk's boot um weight uh, and that's that's really good now what i'm going to say hammond mm -hmm. is that you don't get your next round um because Ooh. i figure you're going to be quite stunned for for could, this could, could i do one thing uh, you know i honestly i just try to give him away from it so is, could i i'm not going to attack but could i like 
maybe try to use the bike as this the as stability as I, I hold my nads. I thought you were away from the bikes. Yeah. Yeah. He, he sat the first bike next to the entrance to the bar, isn't he? Yeah, he he's by the. Well, bar. no, I thought he's put in the, towards the end of the. Like, for example, if um, no. there's three bikes in front of the dry gypsy, and I yeah, assumed yeah. that this fight was going up, up the road opposite yeah. to where he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, to the opposite direction. So he's where here, car is. and we would be here. Yeah, and then Newman would be here. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Minsk, yeah. off you go. Um, you've clobbered um, Hammond. In a sensitive area, you're on a roll now. Hit him again. I'm, I, I'm going to try to, while it's down, cutting his nether regions, I'm going to try to bring up my knee <laughs> into his face. <laughs> Please be a crit. Wait, is this fight? Oh my god! <laughs> 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 So right, hold on, hold on. yeah, so there so is a reason that I'm the captain. That, that <laughs> um, he, he sort of like doubles. Uh, Hammond doubles over, um, grabbing his groin, and then he sort of like looks up to you as if to say, "What on earth?" And at that point, your knee comes up <laughs> and cracks him underneath. And roll a one d four. Your business. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm at six. That's you good. certainly are at uh, six. And, Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, at this point, um, Newman, um, that critical hit roll um, probably did the, the best thing because um, you notice that the uh, June rigger at this point um, moves away from the bike. And it looks like the, the next sort of like round of combat uh, he is going to be far enough from the um, the actual bikes to make your move. Um, so Minsk, it's you again um, because we're in a new round now. So off you go, Minsk. Yeah, you whack him. <laughs> 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 so you you whacked him in the groin. You brought your knee up knee underneath his, his chin, and as his face comes up, up I'm um, gonna ha uppercut. Ha Hammond, give him um, the chair. Give him the chair. <laughs> I'm an old man. <laughs> yeah, um, Hammond, see whether or not you can oppose this role that's coming in. You well, don't you're... deserve your pension. <laughs> oh, oh no! <laughs> No! Um, oh, how the worm has turned. <laughs> however, however, this is an opposed role. Yeah. And Hammond tries to escape the, the blow that's coming down, but the 19 outdoes the 7 very effectively oh. as your fist comes in and <laughs> whacks him on the side uh, of the face. 1d4 points of damage. Sorry. <laughs> Uh. Right, um, oh. Newman, what would you like to do? Would you like to make your move now? Or yes. would you like to wait for another round? <laughs> <laughs> Just see what happens. Uh, I, I know the Hammond and can't take much of this. Okay, then. Um, so your conceal role will be um, to actually get the bike, uh, the um, RFD tag secure on the bike so nobody observes it um, however you're going to have to get there but what i'm going to say to you is going to be um an easy stealth roll because okay. the guy's attention is completely elsewhere he's looking at this hilarious battle so it's going to be quite easy actually I think it would probably be very easy to get across there. He's he's not paying attention at all. So unless you really fumble this, you're going to get there, no problem. But still roll the dice and see what happens. Well, I'm glad I got one point in my stealth last uh Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, here we go. Okay, okay. Oh, oh yeah, there was a delay then. I, I didn't yeah. use... Yeah, so you stealth across and... You know, you pick the right time that it is looking in. The June rigger actually um, 
moves away from the um, bikes. He's got his back to you um, at the moment. So it's a perfect opportunity to go in there and roll roll your conceal roll. You'll only have one attempt to do this, but you can use luck um, if you want to. Can I please remind you, the roll is not to attach it. Um, that will happen sure as it hits metal. The concealed world is to attach it in such a way that it um, manages to um, get higher than an opposed perception roll if they looked at it for it. Okay, so yeah, off you go. Sense. Okay, I'm ready to use my luck. Ooh, uh -oh. yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, 33. Do you want to look it? Do you want to see if you can get high to 55 or you're happy with 33? I think I'm happy with 33. <laughs> okay, so you move along and you get to the bike and just as you're putting it on, um, Hammond, it's your turn to try to hit uh, Minsk. We'll see what happens. Oh, hey. Not the... <laughs> Oh! Oh, my God. <laughs> oh! The crazy mixed up world. You guys are good at fighting. Yeah, I know. I know. You, just, you just need an emotional reason to attack. This is person, okay, and, and this is a, a well-deserved uppercut, if anything. Okay, <laughs> then. So, uh, however, Mince can oppose this. If he gets a critical higher than a one, then he will have won the roll. Right. Don't you do it? It would be so funny if he does it. Don't you fucking dare. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, so um, <laughs> he sort of like, uh, Mince tries to sort of like rain down a, a, a punch at you. Have uh, you? Hey, Major. And yeah. you're probably a little bit sick of this um, since he's probably taking his acting a little bit too far. Where do you want to punch him? What do you mean dental insurance? I'm, yeah. I'm going, <laughs> Bah, right in the face. Okay, well, uh, well, oh, it, it, it won't be a, a D, uh, you did uh, a critical, so that would yeah. take you um, down. Um, the damage is D4 minus six. Yeah, <laughs> 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 that would take Mints down um, to uh, a six. Uh, no, you, oh, seven, you, seven. You'll seven. do maximum damage because it was a crit. Oh, yeah. crit yeah, maximum, okay. yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so yeah, he's sort of like, uh, and you sort of like um, stagger a bit. Yeah. Um, you, Mince, you've seen behind Hammond that um, Newman's moving away from the um, from the um, bikes, the hover bikes. So you can sort of like think of a way to stop it if you wish or Hammond's only got three points left in his conflict <laughs> so if you want to knock him out now is the time um, you know what now, now I'm going to I'm going to pause I'm going to wave my hands like this in front of Hammond so, I'm so sorry oh. I, I, I won't I won't touch your daughter again. <laughs> I, I, I won't, unless she asks me to. All right, and then I'll I'll <laughs> I'll get the hints and I'll let. It's it's all right. It's fight between us. I love you, son. I love you. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Dad. And you, you sort of like um, hug each other and then s stagger. I think anybody else gets that? <laughs> yeah, I'm in a little bit of shock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lost. Yeah, I don't okay, know. Paul. I honestly have no idea. It's better idea. to be lost here. I, I really stay stay have, in the forest of ignorance. I have no idea what's happening at all. So I, I'm just here smiling at oh. this end. I'm going, okay then. Brilliant. Oh, um, so um, Minsk and Hammond, you hug in manly hugs, tapping each other on the back. And um, I'm going to be making sure my hug's extra tight out of a little bit of frustration. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> As you go back, um, Hammond, you're um, pretty um, beaten up. You're quite sore. You haven't taken any hit points of damage, but, you know, you're mm. from 12 to 3. You're going to have bruises. Uh, I'm getting some ice tomorrow. for my nads. And you sort of, like, make your way back to the car. Uh, Minsk, I am going to let you have a perception roll at this point, but just to let you know, this difficulty is going to be hard. 
Okay, so just roll your perception. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, you, you make it. And as you hug Hammond and sort of like uh, put your arms over each other's shoulders and make your way um, back um, in a jolly uh, manner, you, out the corner of your eye, you see that the um, the June Rigger um, definitely enjoyed your, um, your combat. And he was definitely, uh, seemed to be, laughing a little bit and sniggering um but he's also hoping to win a 250 pounds um because as you walk past him you notice that he takes he puts his um, communicator um slowly away and you think you're not too sure means but he might have actually um videoed it in the sense of putting it onto social media, perhaps, and sharing it. But you notice as you walk past, he seems to be looking at it and sort of like laughing um, to to himself and then slips his um, communication device back into his inside leather um, pocket and, and goes um, back to um, smoking his um, cigarette. I make a point of remembering his face to get his phone back off him when he sees me again. Yeah, yeah, by all means. Um, so yeah, so you're sort of like uh, in back to the car now. Uh, Newman, you um, probably congratulate them on um, how realistic it looked from your angle. Hammond, <clears throat> you're speaking, talking in a, a an octave higher than what no, you no, yes, yes, no. <laughs> yes, for what you were beforehand and yeah Newman you can see that uh, Minsk is beating him up you know he's going to have a bit of a bruise coming on um, just underneath his chin when the knee caught him and you know you sort of like uh, agree that it was quite a a, a battle I'm going to have a big swollen cheekbone you probably should have like uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> Maybe he'll back a little bit. Oh, there, yeah. I'm glad I didn't bet on this fight. Yeah, I, to know, I totally agree with you. I would have put my money on Hammond, but Minsk is a little karate kid. Uh, he, he, he There's a little be, latch in him. He'd probably do the crane kick in the next oh. one. <laughs> Hopefully that's on the face and not on the nads again. Yeah, we should probably go see Purdy. Um, oh, that requires an injection, uh, Mr. Hammond. <laughs> okay, so the um, the bug, the tracer is in place, the tracker's in place. What's going to be your um, rest of the activity? for this scenario is there anything else you need want to do or give me an indication what your next actions will be um i think i want to make sure my security security and then come back and start tracking i mean we're we're doing this all night so we need you to be back in fighting action and also we need some entertainment in the car when while we're waiting for this so Uh. pretty definitely but uh, so I'm pretty sure the goal was is we're going to follow them now because we can't yeah. track this at infinite distance. Yeah. Uh, you're, to, you're trying to follow the tracker, and then we were going to follow the drone. So it's like a yeah. a gap between oh, yeah. us and the drone, yeah. and the drone and the cars. So as long as the drone's sticking around and monitoring the tracker, and mm. obviously will tell us if they start heading off, we should be fine if we leave for a sec to pick up pretty. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hypothetically. Yeah. So you, um, all four, uh, three of you, um, head back to the the base, and the um, drone, the surveillance drone, is high in the air, uh, monitoring the 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 general area. And I think Hammond, you've actually got um, a feed, haven't you? That comes back to your communication um, mm-hmm. device, so um, you can actually. Um, see that um, you come back and and Purdy um, administers some um, almost like um, stim patch things to um, help you recover from your stun damage and she she's quite um impressed minsk by your um combat prowess and she saw she makes comments like like are you sure you weren't hitting him with something other than your fists james are you sure you were using your fists 
No, I did, Purdy, I'm, I'm more astounded than you are because I got some lucky punching. I actually thought Hammond would beat the bejeebus out of me. Yes. But I, you know, I, 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 I'm quite, we need to train him with something. We need to get him training, I think. I, I totally agree, James. I was quite surprised that you landed a single punch. Um, but often... Yeah, because she just happened to go right for where he's not supposed to go. But, <laughs> but obviously, Arthur is an elderly man. And perhaps his reflexes are not as quick as a, a young person like yourself, James. I wonder if I have brittle bones. Uh, well, <laughs> we'll check whether or not Hammer's got osteoporosis um, later on. But yeah, I think I've patched him up um, the best I can. And at this point, um, as you're getting back into the vehicle with um, Purdy alongside you, um, you notice that your drone feed um, has um, picked up movement um, outside the uh, dry gypsy. And you notice that all six of them are, well, five of them are coming um, out. And they seem to be, they don't seem to be leaving as such. They seem to be um, stood around the bikes um, mm -hmm. and they seem to be interacting with each other. They seem to be talking um, or something. They don't look like they're ready to leave yet, but there's definitely something going on there. Do you have any audio pickup on your drone? No, he has sensors, yeah. No sensors. No, probably not audio, and I don't want to get a drone too close. Unless, unless I added an audio thing onto the tracker, which I highly doubt I did because it would only add more things to it, which would make it more obvious to see. Your, the the surveillance <clears throat> drone would have, I mean, it's a, it's a surveillance drone, so it's going mm. to have audio pickup. So if you want to see whether or not it can pick up what they're saying, then you would just roll the sensors, um, the the roll of the sensors. Uh, I mean, it's high up, but, you know, that it would just be, so it has, da, 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 um, yeah, its perception is 50%. So you can try to um, patch, it, see what they're um, saying if you wish, or you can just leave it. It's totally up to you. I'll uh, try to roll my sensors then. Um, yeah, so roll, um, roll it. What's your sensors? 51. Okay, then. So you can roll your sensors. Its perception is only 50. So you roll, right. roll those. Ooh. Uh, right. What? That's the, <laughs> this, okay, one. This is the third one of of the night. This is my I second one. I I can't wait. I can't wait yeah, to for, combat. For combat. I, no. <laughs> Ninety nine. Uh, yeah, I I honestly cannot wait um, at all. So um, you pick up some um conversations um between them. And um, you don't pick up the whole flow of the conversation, but you pick up snippets. And just to let you know, there are there were four things that were available um, to hear in this snip snippet. But because of your critical role, I'm going to give you all four of them um, because you're quite um, obviously very proficient in this. So. Um, these are just snippets and you can't get any more information than what I'm going to give you. Okay, so the first um, piece of information, they seem to be talking about a mine and mine shafts. And they seem to be talking that um, it's getting rather boring and it's dull. And coming to the dry gypsy is the only fun that they have and they um, are appearing to say that they're fed up of hiding anymore. And that's why they're coming to the dry gypsy. Um, you also hear um, a conversation that is talking about um, a questioning when the new shipment will be arriving and what they will be doing um, with the current shipment. So it sounds as if they've got something in in their possession and they're wondering when that's going to be moved and the new shipment comes in. The rather worrying thing is, is that you pick up 
um, a conversation, um, you figure that it's somebody who's talking with some kind of authority. So maybe the, the leader in this small group of six, and they keep referring to someone or something. Um, the, the, they refer to it as her. Uh, but sometimes the language is in such a way that they almost like use it or I can't believe it is like that. And they talk about it being difficult to handle. They say mm. it's a good job. Um, it's restrained and gagged. They also say something about somebody sort of like laughs and jokes and says, um, yeah, she's meant to be powerful or it's meant to be powerful. And another one calls it um, her uh, a freaky human um, in that sense. And the, the last um, piece of information um, that you get, and it comes straight after uh, the one that you just had, is that there seems to be a general feeling of uneasiness. They keep talking about that they're not used to um, having to look after humans or people. Um, they seem to be um, talking about products or drugs or something like that or armaments. Um, but they, they're sort of like getting really annoyed and said, you know, this is not what it's normally like. They don't normally do this. Um, why are they having to hold people or this person? Um, you think this this thing that they're referring to, you think probably is human, um, but maybe they do refer to it as a freaky human. And right. at that point, um, they have this conversation um, outside and... They seem to have brought their glasses or their um, containers that they've been drinking out of and they throw it at the dry gypsy wall. I heard something there. That was weird. And then um, once it hit the wall, they seem to be putting on their helmets and their goggles and putting their cloth across their face and then um, heading onto their bikes. And at this point, your um drone will take over yeah is that the plan yes okay um as as the drone takes over i actually want to look at one thing there was a second job on the um on the leaderboards oh, and wow, i remember yeah. i kind of remember mines being part of it um yeah, i can share my notes in the group yeah if you share your notes this is what um, i had about it all right is it on Discord or at World20? Uh, yeah, Discord chat is where I sent it. All right. Business person from Aaron Dubec or called Dubec. They need it with occupants of mines. Help needed with occupants of mines. Please apply within 5%. Yeah. All right. All uh, right. So this might be a two for one, maybe. So you... Oh, yeah, you might be right. You, yeah. You hadn't um, been in um, charge... Uh, in contact, his name was Claude Debeck, and mm -hmm. he worked for um, Debeck um, um, Or That is correct, yeah. We'll have to yeah. apply tomorrow morning. Yeah. Okay, so you um, you head out. Um, I'm just, um, I've got some spam um, coming in to my Discord that I'm just clearing now. So I don't accidentally um, click on it. Um, yeah, so you um, follow the... Um, and I think you said that you, it's going to be a bit of a distance, uh, Minsk. Is that the idea? Yeah, I, I wanted the distance because I put an extender on the on the um, sensor. So that way, like, we uh, the, the drone would be able to pick up more. Um, at a longer distance. And we didn't want the likes of the speeder to be seen over the desert. Yeah, yeah, that that's mm. um, fine. So um, once the, what I'm going to assume is that once the um, bikes, the speed bikes have reached their destination, you will keep 
your stop as well um, at a fair distance so you're not detectable so the bikes do seem to go in an exact straight line it's so straight you can only assume that they have some kind of built-in navigation um, that they've clicked into a waypoint and the bikes are maybe they're either being hand um, manually controlled or even maybe on autopilot but they don't seem to be deviating or moving at all they just seem to be going in a exact straight line and this probably reflects the um, confidence um, of what's um, the the group there there was only three of them and they would ride two um, per um, bike and apart from that they don't um, stop for anything they don't intercept anything they just keep going straight ahead um, on this straight line until they obviously come to one of the many abandoned um, mines that actually are quite um, prolific on Arid because it used to be an ex um, mine, an old mining community. Many of these, as you remember, have long since been fallen into disuse, and they seem there seems to be no remnants of a mining village or anything round here. They it just seems to be um, a hole in the rock face, um, and that's it. As they um, get closer they actually um, go into single file and actually drive their um, speeders into the, the mine. At that point, um, Hammond, there seems to be a little bit of static um, mm-hmm. on, the, um, on the sensors and then the, the tracking, the bug, the beacon um, disappears. It flickers for a while and then um, disappears. Just roll your sensors roll for me. Yeah, you you figure it's either been found or there's something in the ore. uh, Yeah, I I would imagine that they've also gone just too far into the mountain for uh, the radio waves to make it through. Um, so mince you pull up the car so you're quite um, you're a sensible distance away you can't be detected at this um, point and um, just to let you know mince you can quite happily set your own waypoint within your car yeah i will do uh, once we've got a firm location of the entrance it'll be safe to just yeah do exactly that mark it on the map so we know where to come back and then we just have to raise the wire at head height. <laughs> <laughs> We're across. Yeah, um, that's the entrance. I feel that'd be a damn good idea. It wouldn't hurt. I, I don't know. No, let's not do uh, that. Um, on the entrance of the mine, is there any like one of them paint around to, to uh from the um, as guard duty from the the sensor um, array from the drone, um, mm-hmm. there seems to be nothing outside the entrance of the mine at all. No, um, no sensors or anything. No, not, no, like, not that, like sensors. Yeah, so not that yours your drone is picking up. Of course, it mm-hmm. would be an opposed role. So, you know if my um, role to keep hidden a concealed role was something like 97 and then the um, sense the drone sensors didn't pick them up so there's always a possibility um, it, just to let you know it was about um, two hours drive away from um, avid damn that's that's tough that's tough for them because they drive two hours get drunk drive two hours back that's tough by the time they get back, they, they're, sober. They, they, yeah. they're sober, yeah. Mm. Um, oh, God. I don't think they're getting pulled over for drunk driving. It's a desert, right? Uh, it's true. <laughs> they weren't uh, that drunk if they were going in a straight line, unless it was automated. Automated, yep. Yeah, the yeah. drink, drinker of the future. Mm. So what's the plan to cut them? Should we make our attack here, or should we wait a bitch? Maybe even possibly talk about the uh, secondary employer about getting 
about this being the thing they're looking for as well. Mm. Exactly. My, my, my thought, uh, a twin with yours, we should go back to the second contract and see where the mine is they want us to um, uh, to help them with. Do, and if, yeah. if they go inside, so, winner, winner. If they don't, then we do both. Well, I'll make sure the mark that the, the, uh, the coordinates for... Um, for late, so for later, so that we'll be, when we get back, you know exactly where to find them. Yeah. Hmm. So both yourself and Minsk will have those. I was just about. I was just going to say to you is that mm -hmm. remember your contract was initially with Box um, mm -hmm. of the Dry Gypsy. So I didn't know whether or not you were going to call back there um, before you went back to your base or. Well, we will do. Yeah, I think we said last time we spoke to Box was we keep up to date every step of the way. Yeah. So yes, we will. We'll go back to the dry gypsy and um, inform them we know where they are, um, and that we plan to take care of them. But we need to wait for the perfect time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and you... just to find out exactly what happened while they were in the bar last night as well. Yeah. Good yeah, point. Okay. And sure as you get into the bar, you um, recognise that something's not right. Um, something's not right um, at all in the sense that the environment's not the same. Um, the first thing is that it appears extremely empty, um, extremely empty. Um, the other thing that you notice, there seems to be some um, tables, some chairs that have been um, overturned. You notice that one of them has been um, smashed um, you also notice um, in the behind box where the line of um, synth alcohol containers are, um, you notice that a lot of those have been um, thrown. Um, it looks like they've been knocked off and there's quite a bit of debris uh, around uh, boxes and the um, bar woman are sort of like sweeping up um, mess and you also notice that it looks like uh, the remnants of a chair that it was hurled over the the bar um, into the back. And yeah, you sort of like up, appear and boxes sort of like um, uh, uh, mints. This this make an insight roll as you go in. Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm quite attuned to this. I'm, I'm going to use a point of look and reverse that if that's okay. Yeah, so that will be 59. Um, yeah, that'll succeed. He doesn't look very pleased. He, mm. You definitely get the feeling that he was hoping it wouldn't get this far. Um, just so you all know, if any shots had been fired, I would have alerted you to them. Um, outside so it's definitely nobody's been shot or anything like that but there's definitely some kind of um altercation yeah. uh, here and yeah he sort of like um looks um up as all four of you um walk in and then sort of like returns to sweeping um up what remains with a whole load of um synth alcohol containers purdy says I'm afraid Box doesn't seem to be very happy. I'm not too sure why, but I am detecting that he is quite hot. Does she have a crush on him or something? No, we're on a desert planet. Oh, okay. Everybody's heated here. Um, we know where they are. Uh, we will have it sorted. But don't worry. I'm just going to speak to somebody else in a minute and then we will be your way to deal with the situation. The box um, sort of like says, he says, says, and what about the damage? Do you want us to uh, make them pay for it? Well, I think somebody should pay for it. We'll see what we can do. If we find well, anything of use for you, we can maybe um, push it your way. If we try some credits down there, maybe we can um, use it to repair the damage they've made. I was hoping that since I employed you that this wouldn't go this far. 
I well, hope you've got things under control, Minsk. Well, we have things under control. You knew what we were doing to, uh, tonight, or last night, sorry. We knew that you knew this was going to happen one more time. Yes. We told you this. Okay, Box? Now, if we weren't here, things would be a lot worse, wouldn't they? Will you influence, Jack? Yeah, go on, get that. Let's get that influence. He that looks, influence. He, he sort of like makes a, a huffing sound and um, he doesn't acknowledge either way. He huffs a bit and continues to um, wipe and clean up. Oh. And then he talks to, I forget what the bar woman's called. Oh, um, is it? It's um, it's bar woman number one. Yeah, woman okay. bar one. Yeah, I have a funny. It's Rosie or something like that. Doesn't make sense. Uh, how, let me just to see if I've got. Um, I haven't. Uh, haven't got it. Uh, down. Hang on, let me just look at the uh, locations unless somebody's got it. I was going through a back chat that we had because we did speak to her. Well, I, I thought you did. Yeah. Um, uh, dry Gypsy Landmark. Uh, da, 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 da. Dry Gypsy, i got Betty. Betty, Betty, mm -hmm. did you say? I'm going Back to Betty. Add yeah. it to Box my... barkeeper Betty. Thank, thank you. you, thank you. I've <laughs> added um, to it, and um, he sort of like carries on um, sweeping up and everything, and then he he's, he he looks to Betty and says, "Close the doors. It's time that we closed." And um, Betty sort of like um, walks you to the door uh, in a nice way. And then no. uh, once you leave, you hear several locks. You've never been here when the dry gypsy um, is closed, but there's several locks going on, <coughs> on it. And you also notice that they've got um, steel plates that come down over the, the windows uh, over the, and the door. You know, like you see in some high streets that comes down. So, I mean, the only way to break in would either be to try to bash your way through this or find uh, another um, exit uh, or entrance, should I say. Okay, so you um, head off. Um, you're obviously going to sleep the night, um, but you made reference earlier on about the other job what what's the idea with that what's going to happen um, there we want to go to speak or contact um oh god claude de Beck. <laughs> yeah and um find out what the job is and where it is <laughs> which is mine he's talking about mm -hmm. because it's about mine that his family used to own wasn't it and it suddenly reopened yeah um and he thinks by a family member memory serves me um so. Yeah, so so that was the information that you got i think did you research it i think that's what you um might have yeah I, I researched uh, right. um yeah. i research different ones based on the the equivalent of, of the dark web i guess yeah and you yeah. found out that um claude de beck um was used to own um de beck or um, mm -hmm. like uh, what Mr. Pickles popped in the Discord. Um, so that that was um, what you already knew. Um, how, and yeah, this idea that he wants some helps with occupants um, of the mine. Uh, and that's what he said. So is the plan then the next morning to get in touch with him? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, but make sure we're also prepared for a um a possible invasion of the uh of the mine. So make sure our weapons are with us, our droids are charged, well, things of that nature. Are you um calling the drone back that went to the mine? Is that the idea? Would that be called back now? No, I don't think we need that. I think we can leave it there. I want I want to monitor their what they do if because yeah. here's my here's my opinion. 
if they tend to leave at night to go get drunk, I'm assuming they're sleeping through the day. And I want, if, if, if that theory uh, is still the case, if by the time we get there, say early to late morning, um, they'll be asleep. So our chances of infiltration is, you know, increases significantly. Um, so your your drone your drone um, probably goes down into um, low power mode just mm -hmm. so it's got enough power to um, stay there. Just to let you know, if its power does run out, it doesn't just crash to the ground. It always has enough um, enough information, enough power to safely get itself down to, to the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mainly because I know that my drone does that. When I want it to land, I just press a button and it just automatically lands and comes back to me, which is quite interesting. Ooh, that's fancy. Uh, I know. Um, so, yeah, so um, back to Claude de Beck then the, the next morning. Um, Hammond, you have recovered all your um, your damage from your um, conflict pool. So you're a lot, um, a little bit well, you're recovered uh, mm -hmm. you're definitely going to have a bruise um but that's that. that that's about um it you know you're not um t having any um negative um side effects or anything so um minsk it comes down to you um there do you wish just to get in touch uh, like a video call or do you wish to get in in touch with him and say that you want to visit what what's going to be your chosen point of we're on a time scale here so if he's not available this morning um then we will have a video chat with him and get all the necessary information that way but if he's available then we will go as soon as possible this morning to see him yeah and as soon as you make the um video call um the first thing that happens is that you get straight through to Claude himself. There seems to be no um, interactions. There seem to be no assistance or, or anything like that. And as soon as you call it, so it doesn't even ring that much. And you notice that his communicator appears to be on um, the far side of quite a large desk, it, large as in deep, uh, the depth of it. And he seems to be sat at the other end um, in uh, one of those high back um, business leather um, chairs, slowly rocking as I'm doing backwards and forwards. And he sort of like says, oh, that he's, he's really pleased that somebody called. And he says that he's um, available straight away. And he's really um, pleased that some um some people have been in touch to almost like handle the, the situation and encourages you to go down um, straight uh, away. Um, are you taking Purdy with you or not? I think we need to bring, I, I, I would like, even though I dislike Purdy, I think I very much would like Purdy to come with us just in case things go sour. Yeah. Okay. So you probably drive across if that's all right. Minsk is that, happens yeah, yeah, no, yeah. um and you find he sort of like say um sends you the coordinates the waypoint and you drive um straight to it and the first thing you notice it seems to be um uh, a couple of shipping containers one on top of the other um but they they do look very um worn and weathered you the first thing that you notice is that you think there was one of these glowy um fluorescent signs outside at one point um that said um dubeck or um, but you notice now that a lot of the tubes have cracked um even looking at it you don't think it's actually completely um, attached to the side of the building anymore. Um, Purdy does flag this up in a, an issue of health and safety. Uh, and she sort of like says, I really do think, James, that you should report this. I would hate to think if somebody walked underneath it and a small child, um, it fell on a small child. I would be very concerned. W will you be able to um, mention it to um, Mr. DeBeck? Probably, I don't know. Certainly, Penny, once we've worked on our business here, we will bring it up. 
Um, but please don't bring it up yourself. I, I will do it. Yeah, of course, I would never um, um, bring anything like that up without your express permission, James. And you walk in, and the first thing that you notice is that the shipping container has been split up into two rooms. Um, the partition wall is slightly beyond halfway towards you. So you're in the smaller half. And there seems to be a lot of um, tables and chairs stacked over in places. There's a, a plastic fern um, in a pot that is still looking in absolutely perfect condition despite everything else being stacked or overturned. Um, you do notice that there seems to be some kind of an aquarium um, in the um, over to another wall. It's totally, um, the, there's no water in it at all. That you can see the gravel and various and uh, like arches and a, a, a f um, pirate ship, a, a sunken pirate ship on it. As you, you look across, you also can make out what appears to be um, fish skeletons um, on the gravel. Um, it looks like um, if it was empty, the fish were left to um, <coughs> drown or suffocate, and they've obviously decayed over time with just their skeletons left. There seems to be some kind of server cabinet um, over in the corner. You notice this, Hammond, with your computer skill, um, but you also notice that a lot of the interconnecting sort of like Cat5 cables have been pulled out of it and it doesn't look like it's operable anymore uh, at all. And there seems to be nobody on the door. Um, the door seems to be slightly ajar and you've just sort of like walked in and, and as soon as you walked in and taking up your surroundings, the door at the far side um, opens up and who you assume is Claude de Beck um, comes out. He's um, early 20s, late 20s. Um, he has um, slick back hair, um, very slick back hair. Looks like there's about a pound of lard on it to keep it into place. He has numerous really heavy set rings on his fingers and he's sporting um, a three-piece suit that you think has seen much better day. Um, you think he's probably grown since he bought this suit because the waistcoat doesn't sort of like come all the way down and it looks a bit disheveled as if he's um, not hung it up or hasn't ironed it or even maybe slept in it. But he seems very approachable. He seems very friendly and he sort of like says to you, come in, come in. Welcome to Debeck Or. It's lovely to see you. Shall we go straight into my office? And he um, signals to the um, back room. Um, yeah, uh, what's going to be your plan of action? Um, I'll let the captain reach out, you know, talk to him. That's, uh, that's his position. Okay. Uh, are oh, you all... uh, go for it. Look, I'll let you chase his, his heels and he goes in in a sense. Yeah, you know, he'll walk. I will keep the initiative because I've seen this place. He, he just seems to not have a huge amount going forwards, if you know what I mean. So I want to go there. And as he says, Mr. Beck, I want to stick my hand out as he's walking away and shoot him. Shoot him, yes. Yeah, you can shoot him. Um, I follow him until he turns around to shake his hand. Yeah. Okay, does anybody have any corporate knowledge of end description in your... I do. So my only knowledge uh, skill is corporate practice. Yeah, so just um, roll um, corporate practice. I have bureaucracy. Um, yeah, you... Um, this place looks as if it's not been in business for a long period of time, Hammond. Um it looks as if it's not trading. There's no computers here. There's no forms of communication. The server seems to be out. And even when you go into the office, you all notice that there's four chairs around the, the part of the um, desk on this side of the desk. But they're four mismatched ch chairs. They're not all 
um, the same is also like it looks like they've been dragged through to somewhere from somewhere else. And the okay. other thing that you notice is that the where the camera was is very clever because it gave the best vista, the best view of the office. It's mm. as, as if they've planned or he's planned where the edges of the camera would be. And round the rest of the place, there's a it's complete of, chaos. Uh, yeah. Um, open filing cabinets. There seems to be no paper around which you would expect because most things are electronic. But yeah, it's probably seen better days. And it's half past. So that seems to be a perfect opportunity to have our break. Um, so we'll have 15 minutes break and then we, we'll come back and see what Claude de Beck um, has to say for himself and to see whether or not Mintz can actually, shall we say, up the ante slightly to see whether or not a, they can get more pay. Um, so, yeah, we're going to take a 15 minute break. So we'll be back quarter to the hour. So nip off, grab yourself something to eat and a snack. And we will see you back here for the next part of the adventure at quarter to the hour. OK, see you real soon. And I will go there. What what is that? It's what, sorry. Um, don't know what calzone is uh, it's like imagine. it's like if you imagine a, a pizza like squish in half you can just kind of eat all of it oh, all right. but inside this is lots of um jalapenos and um Ooh. meat and chicken and yeah mm, it's dirty you lost the me a jalapenos <laughs> those are hot aren't they jalapenos oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah and a sweet chicken oh Mm. I'm not going to, I'm just going to, uh, I've just had a piece of toast. I feel like a little bit <laughs> let down. So, um, yeah, we left you just entering Claude de Beck's um, office. Um, and he, quite rightly so, as you come in, you, um, he gets up from, uh, from behind his desk and he comes around and he, Minsk, when he, you shake hands with him, it's a definite firm grasp grasp shake if that were you know it's a, a true business person a confidence business person yeah um, and he's sort of like gestures to the chairs he says sit down sit down he says i do apologize for the mess he says i'm only just back on planet so i'm trying to you know get things up and running hmm. oh mr Beck, please um call me claude well, well, thank you, Claude. You, you can call me James. Um, Hi, James. Hey, my Claude has an E on the end, just people always... No, fair enough. So <laughs> my, my, my James has an E in it somewhere as well. Oh, um, we should get along well together. Uh, exactly. Yes. Um, so what, what, what's the nature of your... Um, your problems well he says um he says do sit down and he sort of like goes back and he sort of like says he, he looks like he's looking around um for something and then he says sorry i can't offer you any drinks at the moment company cuts you know and he sort of like sits down and he says yes he says i i've got a bit of an issue Is that I'm purposely talking to you, Mince, because you're trying to eat it. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. As my old father used to say, have you got an issue? Uh, <laughs> he, he sort of like says, yeah, he says, we, we've got a bit of um, uh, uh, a bit of a problem. Hmm. He says... Oh, elaborate. Yeah, he says so. He says, I'm trying to bring um, De Beck all back on track. He says, I, I inherited some money from uh, my mother's side. The company's based on my father's side. Anyway, sadly, she died uh, a, a few months ago. Ooh, must be about six or seven months ago. Anyway, her, in, her inheritance uh, was coming to me, and I thought... Why not reinvest in De Beck or and see whether or not we can take the company back to its height? 
you know, when it's really, really uh, at top. Anyway, um, I came out and we have a mine here. He says, I don't know whether or not you were familiar about the mine. It was what we call a, a, a surface a surface level mine. So he says mining straight into the rock face rather than down into the ground. Oh and, right. And we we had some really good quality, top quality ore, um uh, precious metals, the odd diamond here, there and everywhere. Um but also some uranium um two five seven and yeah, we we made a, a a lot of profit of it. However, <coughs> we thought that the mine was empty, but um, we thought it was out of it. But recently, I had a a scan done from um, synchronized orbit, <coughs> and the radar um, brought back that there's actually seams of ore underneath the initial mining tunnels. So he said, the plan is to sort of like go back and start re-mining um, there. However, he says, I went out there and there were, shall we say, some undesirables there. Describe them to us. Say again, sorry. Do uh, describe them to us. What, what well, he like? says, some of these random... Um, gang members they were dressed in leather and um, they had you know they seemed to be well armed and were basically telling me to you know go away this was their um, place now and that was it right um Paul, do you have a picture of the um the scan you took of the entrance uh, he, he says, uh, yeah, I, uh, and he sort of like looks around and he actually brings up a rolled piece of um, shiny paper and he sort of like unrolls it on the desk in front of you and sort of like puts um, what appears to be a coffee cup that has um, long since lost its coffee and there's bits of mould in the bottom and he sort of like uses random things to... Um, a real open out this plastic covered map it, you can instantly see anybody who's familiar with sensors that it is indeed a a, a scan from um, satellites or via ship down to the ground and it's got the coordinates on um, longitude and latitude etc and you Minsk and Hammond you well, I'm going to walk over to Arthur and, and um, I'd like him to, I'd like to lean forward and just say Whispering his ear and saying, don't give anything away, but um, uh, Arthur, Arthur, come over. You're, you're our expert here. Come and have a look Sorry. at this. Sorry, I was distracted with the wind. What, 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 what can I do? <laughs> <laughs> How can I help you, Captain? <laughs> yeah, do you want to have a look at this map and uh, see what you make of it? Well, oh, I don't know much about maps, but I can take a gander. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, so you recognise it, that it's a, a surface scan. And you notice, Hammond, from the um, longitude and latitude that it shares the same waypoint as the um, where the Drew, dune riggers um, went. Um, mm -hmm. It's definitely the, the same area and quite probably the same entrance um, to the mine. All right. So, um, again... I, I think we we can probably get here without any issue, but uh, you know I just want to make sure we understand is that this seems like a very dangerous job, and we need to make sure uh, if we're going to risk our butch for this, or ours. Uh, wow, is Hammond <laughs> taking over the negotiations? Uh, I'm just saying that maybe <laughs> we, we we need we need to consider the. Uh, he said the, the um, benefits uh, yes i, I totally agree what what sort of price were talking to hammond what sort of price would you be um willing to uh, um, decide well, I, 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 am the, I, I am not the price the, the price uh, negotiator that is, of course my uh, my captain right here i'm just mentioning that this seems to be a very dangerous area and by the way we've not you know we we do know about this area uh, we've even destroyed a few worms in this area, but nonetheless. 
Oh, worms very, very in, dangerous, if I must say. Worms in this. Um, uh, we never had worm problems when we were mining, but I guess the the whole of Arid has gone to rack and ruin, Purdy mm. says. Um, yes, yeah. it's not Arthur that normally does the negotiation. M- Mr. James does that normally. Oh, right, well, yes. Yeah, I'm just giving my two cents. I'm sorry. Uh, my my point is put, uh, yeah. Arthur here is, is our health and safety and um, sensor expert. Oh, they, they could, Claude says, health and safety. Wow, they could be yeah. a right pain in the butt nine times. No offence, Mr. Hammond. Yeah. Yes, I mean, like... he did his right so far, Don't so I'm not taken. complaining. Have you been in a fight recently, Mr. Hammond? There seems to be a bit of bruising on your oh, face. Oh, you, you know how, how how old men like me be always will be falling down and whatnot. Oh. Or we need a cane. <laughs> Are you sure you're up to... My equilibrium always seems to be a little off-put, you know what I'm saying, mate? He, he turns Probably to you. she's a harsh <laughs> mistress. Um, <laughs> yes, Claude um, turns to you, Minton, and says, um, just to let you know, there'll be no life insurance or claims to a life insurance. So, um, no, no, no. no. I, I, I mean, is, he, message... is he strong enough to... Oh, he's fine. He's fine. I'm not really wondering um, the heavy lifting. He acts frail, <laughs> but um, he, he could wrestle the ears off a... Um... Goose. <laughs> a, a, a small, yeah, a small, a like, small dunker. A small dunker. <laughs> a dunker yeah. yeah, or he can wrestle a ragwood to the ground. A ragwood to the yeah. ground. Uh, um, yeah, so he sort of like says to you, um, Minsky, sort of like says, So shall we start the negotiation over cost? Uh, what were you, I mean, your, your, your message on the board seemed quite. Um, Is it five percent help needed? Five percent? Uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. So yeah. you you get to now um, roll, and mm. then it gets either increased or decreased according to your influence um, roll. Um, Here's the money coming. So it, it does, does he now look at it? Please. Um, we saw that roll, by the way. Yeah, I know. Oh. <laughs> I know. It's, uh, uh, what, what you have to beat. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, basically, when we're looking at things, are uh, we need to be able to kit ourselves to go into the tunnels if they decide to go in there and hide. So that's one thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. What am I rolling, by the way? I'm rolling... Influence. My influence. Oh, gosh. That's be a 41. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. So, um, roll a 1d4. Smack crackle, Kathy. Yeah, so you, for a negotiation about, um, you know, what you might need to buy, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, you gain um, the wealth modifier for this will be um, 7% rather than the 5%. So that would be 7% once the job's done um onto your wealth um roles um he also um says that unfortunately as he can as you can see he doesn't have the money he can't pay you any money up front um but he's more than happy to get the um money wired to you or you can come and collect it here um once the job is um completed he also asks um would there be a um how quick do you think you can get it done well, once we've had a look at the place, I mean, I'm hoping in the next couple of days. Oh, he says, I'll be so pleased about that. So, so pleased. Hmm. Um, that that would be really um, useful. And he actually does say that he's willing to give you an extra 1% um, for speed. So if you do sort it within the next two days, um, he will, uh, your total wealth each would be um, 7%, sorry, 8% rather than um, the 7%. And he seems very um, happy um, about that. And sort of like, he asks if you need any more information or anything like that. Is there anything you would like to ask him before you leave? You have a floor plan of the existing puddles in there. Yeah, he's quite happy to give you the um, the the surface scan. Um, nice. You can see the. I mean the the um, the pathway is not completely visible, and when you query him about this, he talks about um, 
the the ore that is underneath the tunnels that uh, is causing some kind of um, interaction. And seems I'll, to... I'll interrupt you at that point now. Yeah. Say, Claude, these are your tunnels from your previous mining expedition here. Is that correct? He says he agrees with that and says yes. Yeah. yeah. So surely you would have the original floor plan of your original mines when he, you originally dug them. He said a, he would have, but it was all electronic, and he sort of like points around the room. And apart from his um, communicator, there seems to be no computers mm. or anything like this um, in in the place. Um, you can make out a rough. Um, outline from the scan that might yeah. be useful but um, one thing that you do notice it is surface level um, so it's not sort of like going down there's no shafts going down it's more like a whole load of tunnels just going into the um, into a mountain basically. yeah 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 mm. um right Claude I'm assuming you've got a contract for both the side yeah and he he certainly does and he sends you across from his own um communicator over to you all to um sign and you notice um that it's already got the um the percentage in written in for um uh, a quick co um completion and there was a, a box and he's already entered in two days um to that um so it almost like reads if the job is completed within two days or up to two days, then an extra um, percentage will be given, so forth and so on. However, la di da, da di da, ba ba ba, some um, legal um, jargon. And you do notice that it comes across with um, the Beck or header on it, on it as well. And it sort of like says established. And you can notice that it was. Um, the time, the chronological time, all matches in um, from um, the information that I think um, Hammond got from the net uh, or yeah. or Purdy or whatever. It all seems to tie in quite nicely. Could we take a photo with our um, electric devices of Mr. Debeck? Yeah, you can um, snap a photo. Uh, are you going to give him a reason or are you going to try to take it... Um, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, Claude, I, I'm sorry. We, we just like to take a, a picture of all our um, employees, our employers, sorry, just yeah. in case anything happens to our payments at any point. And he sort of likes, uh, at that point, um, as soon as he sort of like puts his hand up and he says, I, I, I can send you um, a photograph. Uh, I don't look my best now. Um, I don't want it you know, leaking out to the internet, not that any of you would, but yeah, he can, I'll send you one to your communicators. That, that'd that be um, the best way forward, I think. All right. Okay. Um, I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> did you hear that? <laughs> 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 Alexa, computer. Do you know, it's, <laughs> no, it's because I've said something. Oh, you've said something right. It's not coming to that point. Yeah, um, so it's sort of like, I said something about a pussy, but I didn't, no. I didn't anyway. um, see it um, straight away. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Um, um, as I go past Purdy as we're leaving, I'd like to sort of vocalise with our comms. They just go and grab a staff of him, please. Say, Purdy sort of like says, yeah. yeah. What did you say? I didn't catch what you said. Uh, take a picture of him, please. Yeah. Uh, as we saw, yeah. yeah. Purdy turns around and says, excuse me, Mr. Debeck, would it be possible for you to pose for a photograph that I can take of you? Uh, um, James here has asked me to take a photograph. Huh. And um, Debeck goes, well, no, I, 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 he says, no, no photographs, please, um, uh, robot. No photographs. He seems James. He doesn't seem to be very happy of me taking a photograph of him. No, he doesn't. But do it anyway. He says, "She says, I don't believe that my program allows me to go against the wishes of um, individuals." James, I, I... Right, Claude, thank you for your time, and we will be on this as soon as possible, <laughs> and uh, we'll see you in a couple of days. 
he says, oh, yeah, he says, just just uh, ring the, the comm um, the com number um, when, when you're ready. And he says, and then I, I can arrange to meet you here or another place if that's better, your place or whatever. He says, that's absolutely fine with me. <laughs> and again, I'll, I'll spin on my heel and I'll reach out my arm. I'll shake his a bit more firmer than, than, than his. Yeah. Um, and with my hand slightly twisted, so it's like over his. Yeah. Uh, so I learned that. He, he, um, he, he seems to be quite readily um, available to shake your hand back furiously in a typical businessman um, um, style. Um, yeah, so um, as you you leave the back or um, just to let you know, I I won't ask you to roll insight rolls, but remember you can use insight to tell whether or not people are um, lying or telling the truth or anything. Mm -hmm. um, so the the next plan, um, what sorry, what is your next plan of action? I mean, it's about eleven o'clock in the morning at this point. Is the plan to go? back to your shipping container to um, have a chat and decide what happens or yeah. do you wish to go somewhere else etc um so yeah you go ahead Madavak. yeah I, I think first we should go back to the shipping container decide what we're going to do and then spend the next bit of time after that getting what we need mm. okay then. but you don't go for a cup uh, I liked your plan earlier, and I, you know, I keep thinking it over. I think it might be a make actually makes makes sense, which you know, you you said it like ironically, you said it in a funny fashion, but nonetheless, you know, it, it wouldn't hurt putting in some sort of extremely strong uh, wire at like um, you know right? a few feet, like you know five feet off the ground, and have them chase us, and then literally be kicked well, off their bikes. If you think they go out the same uh, every night to the bar. Yeah. So they're going to come out the same fashion, one at a time, in single file. And well, or they chase yeah. us. Well, no, uh, they, we, they, we they, get they, under they, them. They're going to come out anyway, aren't they? Yeah. So when that happens, we could just go for it, uh, pickles. I just I want to clarify really quick. Mm -hmm. What is our actual end goal plan here? Are we trying to, like, convince them to leave? Are we trying to kill them all? I think that might help to clarify how we plan going forward is what is our actual objective goal? Because they haven't really given us anything other than make the problem stop on both ends. Well, um... And if we're going to kill them, I feel like we need to take advantage of the time right now. It's 11 o'clock, so we get there at 1. They're probably yeah. waking up after sleeping or something. We might be able to get an advantage mm -hmm. surprise. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, so... Well, after hearing the messages as well, I thought that the people smuggling possibly... Yeah, and that also makes me kind of want to get there quickly mm. and, and fix that situation. But, like, realistically, what do we need to be shopping for in, in the um, I, I, We need time? something to secure the, the, the core of the wire. It would be nice to get, like, um, cords you would find, like, uh, uh, electric cord that you would find, like, on, on uh, foam poles or whatnot. Yeah. Something that's really high-threaded. Um and then something secure on both sides of the of the uh, entrance, and that's it. That's all. You know, mm -hmm. I would suggest for you, uh, Mr. Pickles, to bring both your shotguns. I there you wouldn't need the wire if you're doing it at lunchtime. Yeah, this default. Yes. I bring what my weapons. What did you say, Ty? He, he, he was born with two shotguns. Oh, I got you. <laughs> yeah, I got a new shotgun. I'm not leaving yeah. it at home. Okay, good. Um, Let's the, make the, sure. the wire thing is moot now. If we go and join the day, mm -hmm. uh, my my whole thing was if we went. At night time, before they came out, we could put the wire across and get them as they came out. Mm -hmm. um, but if we go and join the day, we just go in. Um, we okay. we've got torches, we've got weapons. Um, we need scanners for sensors, or we need you to be able to scan for sensors and oh, check. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. a good thing because they you yeah. missed the last one. Didn't we missed you? the last one. Do you remember the last mm. base went into one? Yeah. Uh, hey, I'm glad you're learning. Well hey. done. <laughs> I'll um, bring my scanners. Um, and every corridor as we go. I, I'm yeah. assuming that you've gone back to your shipping um, container mm. with, with this um, yeah. conversation. Mm -hmm. But um, it's while you're discussing um, all this is that there's a, a rap at your door 
um, or a knock on the door, however it sat, uh, or a big... I'm going to hide my head somewhere. Uh, yeah, or what, whatever. And there, there seems to be a quite a sturdy sort of like bang, 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 bang um, on the door. So rap. Yes. <laughs> you see, I just hear them on the other side of the door. Yeah. That's a hoop. Pop, hoopity, hoopity, hoop, hoop, pop, you don't stop. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> there's, there's a pause there's a in the knocking. door. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> Purdy, can you get that for us, please, and just find out who it is? Uh, yeah, Pod, um, Shaka Pod, Purdy opens the door, and you all see from where you're sat um, that she mm-hmm. opens the door, and there um, appears to be um, some humans out uh, side um, i'll get my shotgun however um before you grab your um shotgun there appears to be um four of them there seem to be um two in the front and two behind them and they are dressed from head to t- foot completely covered and uh, they are covered in black. They mm. seem to have some kind of um, almost like monk-like um, outer um, clothing on. Um, you notice that it, it goes beyond their hands and it goes right way down to the, their feet. And you do notice that um, the, the feet, where the bottom of it is all sort of like dusty, um, as if they've been um, walking um, through the um, sand. And the there's one other thing that... I'm just going to put their token on the um, map to add to the, um, um, the feel of it, uh, to immerse you. Um, the other thing that you notice straight away is that their face appears to be completely covered up. Um, Imagine a a fencing mask, if uh, that Mm. makes sense. But instead of the wire, um, it's just like black. It looks like from this distance, um, black perspex or plastic or something. But the strange thing about it is that it's polished um it's incredibly shiny and polished so much so that when you actually look to them um or look them in the where you assume their eyes would be you just see yourself looking back for you a, a bit like you know when mirrored sunglasses were were all the craze, and every time you looked at it, you could just see yourself. Did you, see, did you ever watch um, the Black Hole the film? No. Oh my God! Because how people just thought it was mirrored faces. Uh, really? And it was the original crew of the ship that took it off. This old bit of the day. And they wore the same long things that you're describing with a mirrored face. I didn't know. I've never watched the film, so otherwise it would be another copyright incident that I would hate. Anyway, they um, seem to um, be stood there, and when they talk, they talk like normal humans, but um, you figure there's some kind of amplification or built-in mass mics to the um, um, shields or the face shields because you hear them very clearly and purdy opens the door and she says oh my she says i am this is the first time meeting people like you it is so we are so pleased to make your acquaintance please do come in and she sort of like steps back and they you just let them in and they 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 two sort of like walk in and the other two walk in behind them and then slowly move to the side. So they're almost like in like a triangle without the um, um, head person. And Purdy says, welcome. These are my owners. That is uh, Mr. James Mintz there. And that grey looking man is Mr. Arthur Hammond. And the person over there, that's uh, Mr. J- Zach Newman. He's quite proficient in both weapons and the law, if you're interested. 
And then she, she turns to um, all of you three and she says, and um, comrades, my, my party members, please meet these four fantastic sons of the Black Star. And she gestures to them and they sort of like bow a little way, a, a general nod of their um, head. And then um, one of them front right says, greetings, it is nice to make your acquaintance. Well, we don't really have time to join any cults right now, but um, if you'd like to come uh, back uh, later. Uh, okay, sorry. Sorry. Go on, go on, kick him again. <laughs> Mince, kick him again. Kick him again. <laughs> yeah, Mince says, turns to you, how many does? Remember? <laughs> Remember? <laughs> You're good for another kick in you. Hello there. I'm pleased to meet you. How can we help you? The pleasure is all ours. We were hoping that you could in assist us in a certain matter. Do you have a lot to do at the moment? By, but by all means, do please uh, uh, tell us what, what you need. Well, we are somewhat lacking in technical and combat prowess, as you can um, see. However, we are in pursuit of the one. And only love? I don't know. And who is the one? Our ward. Oh, I see. You, 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 you've got some of you carrying for and you've misplaced them. No. We are seekers. We are in search of oh, the ward. The ward. And how could we tell who this ward is a ward when we see them? The, the ward is extremely powerful. She is somebody that we are all looking for. As sons of the Black Stars, we believe completely that this ward will take us to uh, another level uh, of dimension and we will be um, saved and we will all be allowed to um, live forever. Most notable cause, most noteworthy cause, should I say. Um, wouldn't we all like to live forever? Saying that with my bills, probably not. Um, she, uh, the guy, the one of the black stars, the other one left front says, Believe me, you can join us and live forever, Mr. James Minsk. It takes but only a few years to be acquainted by our order, and then you too will have the mercy of the ward. And yes we will then be consumed by the unknown star. And yes, the black star will destroy the worlds as we know it. But when we find the ward and if our faiths are as strong as needs to be, we will overcome the black star. We will be the only people who survive. I'm going to whisper in Newman's ear. If only we ask some Kool Aid to give them. They, the one the loud whisper. Yeah. <laughs> they, the back left is actually a woman's voice. Um, although from the robe, um, the robe is so. Um, there's excess material there and it hangs from the shoulders. So there's no, you wouldn't know it's a woman. You can't see any curvature, um, anything that would identify as a woman apart from the voice. And they say, um, she sort of like says, we could anoint you, uh, Mr. James Minsk. If you would like to join the Sons of the Black Star. No, I'll, I'll stop you there. To be quite honest, I, I would, I'm would. i going to help you, depending on what price you're willing to offer. 
but I have too much going on in my own personal life to, to give up time to join uh, the Sons of the Black Star. Although a most noteworthy course, from what you say, and, and congratulations if you do go on to live forever. Uh, I won't know because I'll be dead, but you know, well done to you if you do. And just to let you know, Go team. The, 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 tone, the tone comes back and there's no hint of aggravation or um, negativity. No. Um, the tone in the woman's voice as she replies to you is, is uh, <laughs> very, very sort of like clear. Of course, your own wish is how you have to live your life. Your life has its pathway. We are all on a journey. And maybe we will cross paths before the black sun arrives, black star arrives. I know that we are all on our personal journeys, but we are grateful, Mr. James Minsk, that you would even consider joining our order. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, now please tell me more um what are you offering um first for our assistance the um the black star member back left so this is the final four one of the four and he seems to have more of a a, a, a guttural man's voice and he says we need you to help us we need to find the ward we need to ascertain if she is the ward and if she is then we will need your help um, to make sure that we take the jump out of this planet away from Arid to the next system um can i do an insight role on my on my own knowledge uh, on knowledge case? about what uh specifically connecting what the biker game was saying about this barely human person they're w watching over and the connection to maybe the ward that they're talking about you there's no need to make a well you can make whatever connection you wish all right, all right. you've got information well, all, all about both lead the rear um I, I want to whisper to uh, Minsk um, in his ear, quieter than than uh, Hammond would whisper. <laughs> um, how'd they know where we are? Pretty confident we're advertised across the goddamn planet. Um, I'll turn around and go. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> okay, well Newman will like glance past you at them and then back at you. Like a, you're the, you're the we can get a camera on the front. <laughs> we, I, I thought we did. Um, <laughs> you know what we don't have though. Do, do what you is what we don't have? You do have cameras on the front, but you oh, ask, do we? But you ask oh. Birdie to open the door. Which, I'm so used to having Arthur's uh, drone go out. You see? Yeah, but uh, oh. that's currently on low mode I, I have one thing we can do i'm gonna i'm gonna make it really quick make a no loitering sign uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> put on the front um i just want a trap door at the front door yeah no soliciting at all too um right we do, do you have a, any idea where we can find this this ward we do not know however we have been sent a picture an image by mm. the people who have her and we are able to share this with you however we are conscious that we need your reassurance that you will help us in this act before we share this information slight possibility my friend that our paths are aligned and one of the other ones says, perhaps knowing that we can pay for your services might be uh, a temptation you may well accept. Well, that would be true. Um, we are just one, one question before we go any further. How did you know where we live? And they, they sort of like, you notice that they almost like look at each other. They turn their faces 
and um, all of them gaze at each other. And then the the front right, the person who started to talk in a man's voice says, you are well known for your exploits. We had to just ask around. We're famous. Great. Good thing. Um, it's not longer than here. Right. We, we will help you to the best of our abilities. And if we do find this ward, we will bring her, did you say her, back to you. It is as a, long as she's doing it voluntary and not against her will. We do need um, for you to bring the ward to us and then accompany us to make sure that nothing befalls us until we jump into the next system. I see. We have a ship at our disposal. Hmm. <laughs> I like this. Do you know? mm. Mm. Okay, how yeah. can we I kill these? Pray <laughs> to me more. Um, that, it, 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 yes, we will do that because I would like to make sure that this person is secure and safe and not doing anything in duress um, because that would go against my code of conduct. The image we are about to share was sent to us um, by the person who was demanding uh, a ransom for her return. However, we no, do not deal with blackmailers. Another, another one of the Sons of Black Star says, that is correct. We uh, do not, um, we do not to succumb to temptations that is put before us, and they um, ask for your communication devices. Um, they, you know, the codes for them and um, for public. It's still protected. It's not hacked, and sends over uh, an image to each of you. It's the same image on every one. And um, when you open it, uh, there seems to be um, a girl um, that uh, is definitely... Um, Sorry, when you did that, Mr. Pickle's cat appeared on my screen. You were a girl and the cat appeared. <laughs> did it really? <laughs> yeah. You didn't say a thing, but it showed up on screen for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> on the big screen, yeah. All right, so, just continue, sorry. Um, so, oh, yeah, sure. um, they sort of, like, send this over to you. I'm just trying to um, find my... Uh, that was what I was waiting for you to put a picture up, then the cat appeared. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, hang on, junk. Right, um, yeah, she seems to be um, roughly about 12 years old, um, early teens, um, female. Um, she's definitely um being held against her um will um because you notice that she's um tied up and you also notice that she has um a gag on um it seems to be some kind of cloth gag around her mouth keeping her mouth from being able to talk and she seemed to be um on the floor, sat on her bottom with the um, back against um, the wall and her knees are up and uh, she's got cuffs on her ankles and cuffs on her wrists as well. And you can see um, from the background of the picture that it looks like it quite possibly be the, the inside um, of uh, a mine or it's definitely underground or in a rock face. You know, it's definitely not a, a structure um, at all. In the picture of this poor girl tied up and struggled and gagged in a mine, I'm going to turn to these four um, from the Black Star and I'm going to say, do, do you want these people that are um, holding her alive? Um, they're, they're sort of like... Um a quick look at each other. Um, just to let you, something else that I forgot about the picture, so I, sorry. Uh, when you look at her, um, she she's doing that weird thing that she's looking straight at the camera back. I'm looking through the camera? Yeah. Yeah. And so when you look at the image, it looks like 
she's looking at you directly. Yeah. But yeah. you do notice there's something quite unsettling about the way she's looking. There seems to be a huge amount of anger. There, there's no fear in those eyes that are looking back at you. They just feel as if there's anger, um, also maybe um, revenge or... Yeah. That there's she she's not crying or anything like that. Mm. It just sort of like seems to be um, anger. Sorry, what I I interrupt. What was your a question before that? No, 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 no. My, my question was: Have you ever seen a child like that? Oh yes. Know, with, oh yes. Okay. Yeah. With um, the mind, do they want them alive or dead? Got you. The, and, the and they um, they look backwards and forwards, and. They, they seem to be just um, looking. And at this point, Purdy says, there is a rumour that the sons of the Black Star are actually telepathic to each other. I don't actually think that is probably, the, probably the answer. Their Perspex shields probably have some kind of good communication devices in them. Um, we could try to take one off, although the last person I remember, well, the other people who's ever, ever tried to remove the Perspex mask of uh, the son of the Black Star has, well, uh, ended up dead. And at that point, the uh, one of the sons of the Black Star turned around and says, if as long as we have our ward back, then we do not, we are not concerned how she is returned to us, as long as she is returned to us alive. Thank you. Um, I will give my communication. Well, they've already got my communication details, haven't they? We will contact you when the job, when, when we have the um, the girl. She he says, she says, um, yes, and we will then, once that's happened, we will transmit um, your first part of your payment. Your Thank payment you. will come in two lots, um, each the equivalent of 10%. So the total amount that you would get is 20%. 20. Huh. We will be waiting in the starport for your return. We have a ship, so please do not worry about buying one. Your mission just needs to be to get the war to us and then accompany us safely to the next star system. I am sure there will be transport for you to return from that system. Uh, cool. Well, cool. That's fine. I, I'm more concerned about this girl. And that they all sort of like um, bow and they get back into their two by two square and turn around and almost like shuffle out uh, rather than. Trying to pretend to hover out there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they 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 don't want it's as if they're trying to remove any outside impression that they're human mm -hmm. you know and even when it's they terrible. were talking to you their their hands were um underneath their um oh, yeah, yeah yeah you know so there was at no point that you could say oh this is a human and the most mm -hmm. unnerving thing is the um, the reflective black face mask? Um, if anybody would like to, at this point, do any research about the Sons of the Black Stars, then that's absolutely fine. You can just roll your research um, skills. Yeah, I'd um, expect um, Hammond to be jumping on that straight away. To be fair, yeah, yeah, I'd probably do it um, on the way there. Really? Use my research skill on the yeah because there's gonna be a two hour drive there. We need to make sure we leave like sooner than later. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then. So, um, are you um taking? So the idea now is to head out to the um June Riggers Cave. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now, now that um we're kind of putting two and three together and making a big payday. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. So just to let you know, um, there's one more thing that happens before you set off and uh, Minsk your um, communicator um, buzzes and there seems to be an 
unregistered number um, calling your um, communicator? Um, I'll answer it. I'll, I'll, no, I'll kick you off. I'll, I'll click cancel. Yeah. It's probably it's just a telemarketer. Yeah. And, you know, and after a few minutes, like minute 30 seconds to a minute, it rings again. <sighs> I'm packing my gear and I've gone click off. Um, I'm continuing to pack my gear. Yeah. And it's gone again. So I'll pick up your. Oh, it doesn't. Answer. It doesn't go um, a third time. It does. No, no. no I, I will click answer on the second one. I'll be like, I'm packing my gear. Oh, I'll pick it up. Click answer. Yeah. And a, a rather silvery voice um, answers the um, answers you and talks to you. And he, it's definitely a he. And he says, people who do not answer their phones straight away, I do not like doing business with them. Um, <laughs> I'm very sorry, but I'm not in the habit of um, answering uh, unknown calls at the first no need, time. There is no need to be sorry. But the price has just increased. I hear you wish to make contact with me. Oh. Are we... Uh, this is your... Um, this is me talking out of character. This is your shopping list. Uh, WC. I, I WC. Was in, <laughs> it, it, WooCommerce. I, it, WooCommerce. If, if you were going to knock it off, then the, the next thing you were going to get is an email yeah. <laughs> saying... <laughs> saying I do not wish to do business with you. <laughs> Followed by Poppy. How do you not answer me? I don't want to do business with you anyway. Stop yeah. it. Leave me alone. Um, again, I, I, I'll, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Uh, WC. Is that, is that what we call you? Um, names, are, names are unimportant in these that transactions. Much is true. Uh, but we, we're very, very busy on a job at the moment, which is why I was cancelling the call. But yes, um, did you get our our shopping list? Just just roll your deceit. Well, I was. I'm not. I'm not cheating. <laughs> it's what I was doing. Just roll your deceit. There we go. Um, yeah, and um, the silvery voice comes back. He says, "I am aware of what you are doing." Shall we get to business? What is it that you would like me to ascertain for you? Certainly. Um, gosh, here we go, shopping this time. Um, we got a double bar truck, we don't need that. Um, <laughs> Remember I order, imagine right? you all sat back. So what was it that you wanted? Yeah. What, what did you... Oh, and do you have cucumbers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll have a Big Mac, please. Yeah. yeah. Done button rounds. This is for the shotgun, isn't it? Thumb button round. Um, I can't read my. Is that not? not... <laughs> oh, incendiary. No. Incendiary <laughs> ammo. You get Incen two goats and a guinea pig. <laughs> yeah, incendiary ammo. And then you wanted a scalp drone and a sensory drone. And a guard. Sorry, a, a, a scalp drone or a guard drone, wasn't it? <laughs> Captain. Mr. Oh, yes. So, yeah. yes, I have a scout drone in us and a no, security we were drone. No, guard drone, didn't we? Security drone, yeah. The guard drone. It's for security, isn't it? <laughs> I got, all right, I got a scout, scout drone, guard drone, <laughs> sensory drone. Um, Jesus wants to type in, in the uh, World yeah. 20 chat what, what you need. What I've got here. Yeah. So in Sinjamo. Oh, what, what are we writing down? Yeah, What's on the shopping list? Ammo. And this was for your shotgun, wasn't it? I'm looking up the exact list. Okay, you've got to paste it. Don't worry, uh, there is no rush about this. <laughs> Shotgun uh, incendiary ammo, yeah. Um, 
we're, we're supposed to get um no i don't know if this guy was able to get us uh the uh, uh we call it the um Shotgun stun baton. It wasn't a security drone. It was like another kind of drone. It yeah, was guard just, drone. Guard drone. It, was it just guard drone? Okay. Yeah, I've got guard drone written down here. He's, he's uh, a guard it's like it's the same guard drone. Guard yeah. Bot. More powerful. Has and to. instead of a surveillance, it was supposed to be a scout drone. It was a scout drone. I've got a scout drone. Yeah. 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 So yeah. there's a scout drone. So the guard bot comes with two um, blasters armed to it. And maybe some sort of bombs, maybe you know, just things, just I just ideas, some bombs, some bombs, <laughs> nice bombs with grenades, you know, nothing too crazy. It's so, probably better. I forget shotgun and <laughs> shotgun <laughs> at a personal was grenade. The last one I'm trying to find. Yeah. I'm also a really, really rad shotgun, if that exists. A what, sorry? Like a rad, rad one. one. Like, it's not, I don't know how it would be. Better it's a shotgun cooler, on the side that says R A D. A shotgun with maybe it has side. flames on it or or that, yeah, that, you know yeah. I don't know. It, oh, like a fancy strike. looking shotgun. I I don't know if there is anything fancier than the bloody snail shotgun to be honest. But you could but... probably ask for a paint job on it. Hmm. Um, it's rad stands for really awesome destroyer. No, it doesn't. You're, wind, you're winding me up now. I'm not believing anything you yeah, lot say. I, I saw a commercial for the, the rad shotgun. Really awesome destroyer. Can I, can I get one of those? I'm becoming wary of your um, jokes now, I tell you. Okay, is there anything else on your combat li on your shopping list apart from those? Well, it wasn't a big shopping list. It was just, I mean, the most expensive Cigarettes. Drone. No, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, Did we want to get illegal oh. drugs? <laughs> I didn't think so. Uh, you know. <laughs> this amazes me. Really... We can do. Uh... No, I didn't want any illegal drugs. It's... We can really make, go into a vice version of this uh, this game. Really fast and a spaceship, yeah. You just <laughs> just, just pop that on on the uh, end. It's like it's like when you send the wife shopping. It's like yeah, this 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 this, this an Xbox one. I, did, yeah, <laughs> I, I can imagine on right. this episode of, of Solar System Vice. Let me. Oh, our voice. We go for skin packs and things, aren't we? That you can buy those legally, can't we? Um, no. Oh, in which case, um, we want some healing packs. So they, um, I popped it. Yeah. I popped it. We did pop in chat. Yeah. So um, basically, um, there are. Oh yes, they look very similar to those without the, without yeah. the glowing eye. Oh no, they're not glowing. That, that, that's that's reflections. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Fantastic. I'd Brilliant never film, by the way. Brilliant What's film. it called? The Black Hole. The it's Black Hole. I, I, um, I will give it a watch. Um, I had the LP of it as a child because the music was awesome. It? Oh, right. There's an yeah. LP. Yes. Okay, so there's um, Sim Fat Patches. Um, um, so that reduces level of fatigues. Yeah. There's um, Sim pain patches and that reduces wound category so it can go from a, a senior a serious to a minor and um, there's toxin toxic toxins and antidote patches so you have to buy the chemicals af, uh, at a later date but basically those patches are then preloaded with the toxin or the antibody anti um dotes yeah. and then there's um a stabilizing um stim patches that trauma patches that stabilize um death so say for example you got hit by the chest that it that's going to kill you you can slap that on and it will stabilize you for a certain period of time and if you receive major medical aid via that time i.e in a um a hospital then it can actually um get you to um bring you back to life the other thing to remember is that they all are army issue 
So it's not any, you can't buy them anywhere else. They have to come from um, Army Issue because otherwise everybody would be using them. Of course, there are pick-me-up drugs, if you want them, that you can pop to try to do the same as a, a stim patch to reduce your fatigue. But of course, they have a larger opportunity or a larger chance of making you um, yeah. uh, what, um, addicted. Okay, Box of each of the ordinary. <laughs> okay. I'm assuming you're a boxer, so a box of yeah, each. Yeah, I'll have three stim packs. Uh, when, yeah, and yeah. Um, yeah, when you ask for the um, stim patches, you uh, that even the, the 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 one that doesn't get a a, ne a negative laugh are the drones and um, Wu um, Commerce sort of like says to you, I will be in touch when I have. Um, located um, your devices, please be aware that these will be illegal and you will be uh, receiving stolen goods. It's on your own conscience to decide whether or not you would like to do that or not. Um, Certainly, but um, could you cool please, that. we're going to be in um, a situation in the next 12, or for the next 12 hours or so, so could you ring after them, please? If that's okay. The yeah. call was disconnected when he oh. finished uh, talking. I'm going to put my phone, my my, uh, my device onto vibrate. <laughs> onto silent I? vibrate. Yeah. Yeah. And then stick it down the front stick of your pants there. or something. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, uh, then. Um, so I it's think... It's all happening, isn't it? It's really all happening. Yeah. Uh, oh. So you've now got a huge amount of... Uh -huh. Um, feeds and things happening. Um, I think Hammond said that he was going to research the um, Sons of the Black Stars on the way out um, yeah. in the two hours. Okay, so it's coming up to about 12 noon now. Um, so you'll be able to arrive at the entrance of the um, cave system or the tunnel system um, about two o'clock in the afternoon, so it will still be um, light. Not too early. Um, I'm assuming that um, Minsk is. Can you just or anybody give me a quick? Are you just driving straight up to the tunnel entrance? What's going to be your approach? Um, I need I'm to hoping know the the location. I'll be driving straight up to the the, um, the, the entrance. No, I'll be going to either the north or south of the entrance and we'll be walking to it. Um, yeah. Um, so hopefully on the map that we've got, the, 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 the scan, mm. I'll be able to find a little alcove somewhere where I can leave the speeder. Not too far away, but far enough not to be picked up. Got you. And then as we move towards the entrance, we'll be scanning for Hammond, Will be and, and Purdy as well. We'll be scanning for sensors all the way there. Got yeah. Sensors and also I will bring my um my uh, sniper rifle so that way I'll be able to look through the scope and look for any uh, bogies. Yeah. Okay. Thing. So I, and, I, don't forget to call back your drone to power to, to to recharge it while we're here. Yeah, I'll I'll uh, also have it recharge on the on the vehicle. Okay. The approach. Um. So you um set out um Minsk. Um, you know how far you can run. It should be on your character sheet, yeah? Yes. Yeah. How far can you run? Uh, 18. So how many, how many rounds of 18 do you want to be away from the entrance? That's the easiest well, way for me to think about I, it. I don't want to be running anyway. No, um, but I, I'm think, I know you're not right, running, sorry. but I'm thinking when you come out, you might be running, and so you're not going to if you're in being pursued three, by something. Three in that case, three eighteens. Three eighteens, yes. Yeah. So that's so far enough away not to trigger any sense. Yeah, so that would be like three rounds of mm. runnings, so not turns. Rounds. Yeah, rounds. Yeah. Okay then. Um. So as you um set off, um Hammond has done his um research role there. Um, just to let you know that anything that they uh, mentioned in the chat is quite true. Um, the other information that you get is the first thing that um, the Sons of the Black Stars are all called sons despite their gender. 
Um, they just seem to be almost like the the name of the order or the cult. The mm. other thing that you find out is that, um, yeah, they are not combat proficient. They're not technically minded or anything like that. Um, but what they do is that they're put into groups of four, which are then called seekers. And their job is to follow up any possible lead that mentions the ward. Okay? okay, so anything that could be classed as the ward, they go um, investigating. And there is, um, there's sort of like question, but what is the ward? And the information on the web um, or the networks is that the ward is, and it's quite um, clear about this, uh, a female mm -hmm. in their early teens, so from 11 um, up to 20, but they think probably less than 16. Mm -hmm. And they say, then it's a bit weird because it says the ward is 12 years old female and carries the, and has the power to save the sons of the black son when the apocalypse happens. So it refers to the ward as something that has the power, um, but it doesn't mention whenever you talk about it or you type in what is the power of the ward, and there seems to be no connection. There's been a lot of speculation about mm -hmm. what the um, ward's power is, but there, you know, some people say it's an alien. And it's re they're really dangerous. Um, some people actually, some contacts on the web actually says that they don't believe the ward actually exists, and that you know the the sons of the black star are just are people who are totally randomly trying to search for something um, with with no reason before is it el dorado's the the city of gold is that right yeah yeah yeah. El Dorado, yeah yeah so it's a bit like that the sense that there's a whole order the sons of the black star um actually searching and um, just to let you know most um sons will go supernova and mm -hmm. this black star is not clear what even that might be. Um, the most common um, description is that it will hole. be... Yeah, exactly right. It'll be a black hole of some kind. And the other thing, they seem to have no base. So they appear to always appear in groups of four in these seekers, but there seems to be no central planet um, they seem to always be reconning or scouting in search, but they don't look for the ward themselves. They mm -hmm. are notified and they follow up leads. So they might get an indication that the ward might be somewhere and then they, they head off to um, find it. Um, so, yeah, so that's um, the information about the Sons of the Black Star. Okay, so okay. you um, drive out uh, over two hours. The um, surveillance drone is on low power, um, but sort of like boots up as you get closer. Um, you notice, Hammond, that you check the, um, the readings, the, the sensor log, and there appears to have been no... Um, no action, no activity um, at all. Um, mm -hmm. Minsk, you park your uh, the hover car sort of like uh, about 60 odd meters away and you sort of like make your way to um, the entrance. And as you get closer, you do notice that <clears throat> and these weren't picked up by the overhead. Um, visual um, shot of the um, by the drone mm. mainly because they are covered in sand you notice that there's as you get closer there's various um, panels um, there looks like a, a sign 
um, quite a big sign that's been, it's face down in the sand and a lot of sand has blown over it. And you mm -hmm. can just see one little bit um, sticking out. Um, you can try to lift it um, if you wish. Um, there's a whole load of what appears to be boards, um, planks of wood. Um, they're, they're very sun they've been starved of humidity and um, moisture so they're quite brittle and they seem to be scattered uh, around the entrance um, as you get closer neither sensors pick anything up on the front of the um, the entrance and mm -hmm. even looking through your telescopic sights Hammond there there seems to be nothing um, there um, at all. Okay. Sorry. Um, one of these signs high enough out of the sand to maybe brush it and just get an, get an idea of what's yeah, underneath it? They're, they're actually um, face down. Oh. So that's why. But, you know, with a good brawn roll. No, we're, we're not here to look at signs. <laughs> uh. um, with, with a good brawn roll, uh, you'll be able to lift up. I don't know. Or you enter here. Sorry? Did somebody say brawn? Brawn. That's good brawn, yes. Yeah, go, um, go for Newman, it. Newman, could you carefully lift this sign up so you can see what it says? Um, well, if he lifts the sign up, I can also use, you know, maybe an item nearby or something as a help of leverage and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, here is my brawniness and my ability to lift signs. It's nice to give. Like it's nice to give Newman something to do in the adventure. I'm, I'm watching for danger. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> talking and learning the research. I'm not very bright, but I can lift heavy but things. But I can lift heavy objects. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So you sort of like lift it up, and it's you can um, see as well, Hanman, as you get something uh -huh. underneath and le le lever it up. Um, it actually says that um, it, it's a sign that says. Um, Don't lift me. D Beck or no. so oh. this sort of like corresponds with um, the information. This is actually the D Beck or mine, or originally it was um, Got it. the mine. Yeah. All right. Um, any sensors so far? No, Anything? there's nothing no. on the entrance at all. Okay. All right um yeah i guess we continue uh if, if we can get it up okay so, is guns ready yeah um so you um you have your um weapons drawn and you come round the corner and you look i i, I have them by the way oh yeah okay and <laughs> you look down the tunnel and mm. you notice that it's quite a long tunnel and it stretches far into the um the mountainside, the um, uh, as far in the sense that the natural light does not carry on right yeah. to the end. I was going to ask, is it lit by anything? Or... Yeah, no, not not at not at all. And um, you can see that um, just on the entrance, you can see that the ground's not sandy here. It's mm. actually compacted as if people have walked over it um, an, a number of times. And, but the side wall and the, um, the overhead is still very much, it, it's been carved out of the, um, the rock face. Mm. Um, yeah, is the plan to enter in and see what happens as you go in? Indeed. Yeah. Okay um, then. So I'm trying to think of. Uh, so is is the um, is it going straight through or is it yeah, does it curve or anything? No, it, it's absolutely um, straight. And okay. you sort of like go down. You you think you've travelled about fifty meters in, and just as the daylight slowly starts to peter out, so you're still in the last limits of daylight at the moment. You look ahead. <laughs> And I'm assuming that you're still um, scanning on sensors and everything. So, um, um, Hammond, could you just roll your sensor roll? Yeah. Another thing, I was wondering, uh, uh, I want to make sure my security drone is with me. Yeah. No. Is that possible? Okay. All right. 
Somebody needs to make a sense of yeah, as well. I, I'm, you know? just, um, I'm sorry. just doing it, yeah. Um, yeah, um, so as you, you're not into the darkness yet, you're onto that, just that cusp of it. And as you look down ahead, you notice, um, Purdy alerts you to this, and Hammond, you see it on the sensors as well. Um, there appears to be, um, at ground level, um, about about 30 centimetres, 40 centimetres above the um, the ground on, on both sides of the tunnel, but um, staggered. Um, so there's never two opposite each other. And mm -hmm. there seems to be, um, you, you've seen these a lot. Um, Hammond, you've seen it a lot in corporate buildings. Um, they, they are motion detectors but they're uh, not security motion detectors. Um, they've been set up to um, turn on lighting. And uh, as you sort of like see the, uh, the uh, trackers, you then notice that up on the top, there seems to be cylindrical holes with a, a perspex over them that obviously seems to be the, the light. Um, these are staggered further down the corridor into the darkness. Um, you don't know how long they will take, but definitely, you know, you've all seen things like this. If you walk mm. past one, it will turn on the lights. And I've just seen the time now. So I do apologize. We're one minute over. Good job I didn't start a combat, wasn't it? I didn't turn off the lights. Yeah. <laughs> I, I oh, I'll shoot the lights so I start combat. Do you know, but, um, I actually thought we're only like 20 minutes away from the... Uh, when I looked at it, it said one minute past. I thought it was still one minute past nine. Mm -hmm. that, that half an hour. So I looked at it, it was half past nine, and I was like, oh, that looks good. It was like, ten o'clock. Yeah. And it, it's just sort of like... So anyway, so that's a good place to leave it, and it also mm. gives you time for a little bit of um, thinking. So... Fools rush in. Um, I've actually got the map done. The map's on screen, and I was about to pull you onto it, uh, but I'll leave that. So um, if you don't want to see the map, don't watch this video when I put it up, because the map... Oh, it, yeah, it'll be on there. Yeah, yeah so you, you will see it. So um, it. it will go up, but if you don't want to see it, then um, don't, don't look at it. I've moved it back to the main um, path now. Um, so, yeah, uh, well done. You seem to have a lot of threads going on at the moment. Um, Newman, yeah. Newman, don't worry. There's some combat coming up soon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've just been watching, taking notes. I'm, I'm ready for people to betray us. I've got, got my shotgun ready to blast. I would... When would I ever betray betray the party? I would never do that. I'm interested sure. how you think they link together. By the way, I am interested in that uh, to see to see what's actually happening. I'm, I'm waiting for people who can be the proud owners of a mine when um, what's his face can't pay his claw. Yeah, <laughs> nice point. Yeah, you you would yeah. love to. What would you prefer, too. Minsk, a mine or a ship? A ship. <laughs> I would prefer I would prefer the mine to pay for the ship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You sell the yeah. mine to pay for the ship. That's that's, that's right. Do it. Well, it does look like we might get, you know, if you succeed in finding the ward, then we might have some space combat um coming up. Um, you know, if you decide to um flee or help them onto the next jump system. So Newman, you might be because I think you're the ship's gunner. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, I have that gunnery. Yeah, so you're going to be in a little tote with a headset on, you know. I, I, I can't say, don't get cocky, kid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, we'll see how many times you can get uh, a Star Wars quote where you're, yeah. you're that's not a moon. <laughs> it's a space I mean, station. Not a moon. I actually like that we're stopping right now before all we start all this because I imagine all of our rules from here on out are going to be terrible with how our oh, rules God, have been yes. so far. Oh, yeah. yes. Right Good now call. is a perfect time to like restart the rules. That whole... is so true because I've never seen so many criticals. 
Yeah. I know. I in a row for me. I had like two in a row. It's One. a new macro I've got. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm really interested if I actually roll something, whether or not I get the... Do it. No. There we go. Do you, do, you, <laughs> do you get the sidebar? Do you get the little D20, the icosahedron um, button? And do you get that? on the sidebar uh, or not yeah i do i i have it because if you go on to it there's sort of like d4 d6 d8 10 12 20 100 and then it says mm. fudge yeah so i just not do that i don't know what that bar. means how'd you get that up you know so, I, I see the fudge bar you know on the right hand the oh, left on hand the right, on the left hand side yeah, yeah yeah so on the left side if you go to I the dice fudge. so what what is what is fudge Oh. Um, Berlin D fudge. It's a toffee you eat. I, I got the fudge. I got a plus one though. What the hell's fudge do? What the fudge? I, so I, if I, anybody I, in chat can tell us what fudge does when you put it on your car chair. Car seat, <laughs> I and think the hot I'm a sun, fudge is just a fudge. And I was oh. just interested whether or not you have it um, or not. And then I no, have... I, I don't have any fudge. And then over the top, do you get the, um, it says GM, and there, there's one, two, three, four yeah. signs. Yeah, yeah. I, because you can click those, and it stays on. I think that's for the GM to get, make it more uh, extreme, like pay so, attention to this roll. So did you roll something then, Minsk? Are you I, seeing I those? Did. Are you seeing I can those? see two GM four and two. Yeah, so I don't understand what that is. I think they're just secret rolls. But why four and two? If because if you press it and then roll percentile. Okay, let, let, let me do this, the third one. I'll do D twenty. The GM. That's, right, that's a private roll. In in the brackets, it does something different. So do you see that D twenty roll? Yeah. Oh, and that you, one says D21, yes. 2GM. 2GM, you see that role. Yes, yeah. So I don't understand why it's being sent to me. Right, so if... Could, you, could anybody else see it? I'm a little confused now. Can you see on, my on the, roles? On the bar, you know where you normally see... On the see right-hand the... side, the chat bar. Yeah, I'm not seeing this thing in the chat bar you're talking You're not about. seeing my roles to the GM? No. The last thing I see is Game Masters. Two roles. Yeah, me too. Oh, All right, okay. Oh, and so they don't... They, they, secret roles. they don't see any of them, then. They don't see <sighs> those other two that you've sent me, either. No. That can be, it's another way of doing a blind roll, I guess, to just the GM. I, 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 am, I am going to figure it out, because I just noticed them there. I thought... So, oh. If I go across, if I go across D twenty click five, it rolls it five times. Yeah, to me. And so on. So that must be that what it, what, what that one is. What what, that what's that one? So where's that? So if I do, so if you go, go D twenty and go uh, one, two, three. It goes two, two three, three, four, yeah. five. So that rolls it, so I roll it twice. Yeah. So and add them together. So that's like if you want to do advantage and disadvantage. Now let me do the same thing again with brackets though. Okay. So GM brackets and then number one selected. So what what's the difference there? Twelve. Um, what, what, what? You roll two. Oh right. So I did my dice don't show. Yeah. So it's just showing the actual roll rather than the dice. Yeah. So I suppose if you're doing D and D. And it, you roll a d20 and it's a crit. But no, I can't have to make this. I, I, will, I will search it out and we will see. Okay, then. Thank you, everybody, for coming along and watching. Sorry that it was a lot of talking, but I, I, I do like narratives. But, and, yeah, the, we'll get to the infiltration of the camp, of the tunnels. And it's going to be interesting what the party actually find and what they're going to do next. I am... Please let me know if you're going for stun or not as you go in. Well, um, got a child in there. Going to kill. Yeah, but Newman's shotgun does not have a stun mode on it. No, no, no. He, 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 he can pre-stun them because <laughs> Did you say, uh, he's got a stun ammo coming, doesn't he? I think he said it's set to fun. Is that what you yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, set to fun. <laughs> 
it was fun for the shooter. Fun for the shooter. Single shot. Yeah, fun for the shooter. That's yeah. it. Fantastic. We, 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 we found the kill. It's okay. They're just taking yeah. very long naps. That's all. They're These very sleepy. are the pieces of the kill. Yes. Anyway, thank you so much for coming along and joining us this week. Hope you, hopefully you'll be able to come back next week or the next time we play and see how good Newman is in combat. We now know how good Minsk and Hammond are in combat. So... Uh -huh. They're probably doing fisticuffs for the, the rest of their time. So, yeah, we'll see you next time. Um, so thank you very much for your support. I'll Until then, mate. say again, sorry. I'll have you, mate, Einstein and Newton. <laughs> anyway, yeah. until next yeah. time, it's goodbye from me, goodbye. And it's goodbye from them as well. Goodbye. Bye, guys. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye-bye. Bye-bye.